podcast. Check it out. The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan podcast by night, all day. Well, I, I, of course, come bearing gifts to two new Texans, so that's that's a separate thing. Um, but I, I did, I was at the range working, and I was wearing a Hawaiian shirt. It wasn't even a Hawaiian shirt. I had bought it in Czech Republic, and uh, but it looked like a Hawaiian shirt. And in the comment section, I was in body armor. I had my gun. I was literally working. Everybody was like, oh my gosh, you're wearing a Hawaiian shirt. Oh, you're part of this super extremist, like white supremacist group. And I was like... What? I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt. I, and they start like freaking out, like cancel culture. And I was like, I bought that. It doesn't matter where I bought it. But now, because you're telling me I'm not supposed to wear it, because I guess Hawaiian shirts are for, for a uniform for white supremacists. So. Oh, God. Please Google this. This is a new thing. Yeah. What? Yep. Hawaiian shirts are white yeah, supremacists? can't do it. So, of course, the first thing I did was like, buy every Hawaiian shirt I can possibly find just because I'm not supposed to, you know? I, who the fuck is saying this? I need to see this. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. How could a Hawaiian shirt be white supremacist? It's I don't think there's any logic ever attached to any of these things. No, but um, like the boot, I think like the Boogaloo Bros. Yeah, yeah, so that's what the Wall Street Journal says. Why the extremist Boogaloo boys wear Hawaiian shirts? <laughs> Please there put that up on the screen. <laughs> I need to see this fucking nonsense. What? Oh my god, this is real. Why the extremist Boogaloo boys? I'm wear not joking. Hawaiian... That, oh my the... god. Aloha shirts have become a disconcerting signature for members of a gun-toting anti-government. What does it say? You made it a little too big. I work for the government. So faction. Does it, does that cancel this? Oh my God! In the past couple of weeks, following the killing of George Floyd, curiously dressed counter-protesters have attended scattered demonstrations across the U.S., armed and disconcertingly garbed in Magnum PI style floral Hawaiian shirts. Magnum P.I. is pretty fucking American. He, yeah, it's pretty epic. Three things here. They're really comfortable. Floral, yeah. floral is a great pattern. And they're very breathable. And you can and on the range, I, I like to do the top button thing and pop a collar so you don't get hot brass down your neck because huh. when we're shooting a ton. Yeah. So it's like a, eh, don't get burned. Don't want to be a redneck. You know? Yeah. Like I hate white supremacists, but... What's wrong with Hawaiian shirts? You can, we can't let them take away Hawaiian no, shirts. No, that's the exact point that I'm, yeah. that I'm trying to... I was like, you tell me the things that I'm not supposed to do... And I'm going to do those things because I'm not going to let you take those things from me. There like, they are. Far right boogaloo movement is using Hawaiian shirts. Oh, that's a chubby shirt. Intentions. The dude right there on the far right. Mm. Like, I have that shirt. Oh, they're wearing the shirts to hide their intentions. What? Oh, no, they, they wear them because they're comfortable and they're breathable. And, they're, and this one's stretchy. They're taking away everything fun. You can't even do okay anymore. Remember? Okay is now. I still a white do that. Spread. I do too. Um, it's been around way too long. You can't steal okay. Scuba diving, skydiving, yeah. military. Like you, like I can't. I don't know what the other symbol is for not okay. There's some things that it's like gay people took over the rainbow. Okay, you can have the rainbow. I don't know. I like my my son really likes the rainbow. I like rainbows He's too. He's five. I don't. I'll still wear a rainbow. I don't mm -hmm. give a fuck. Oh, for sure. But I do recognize that it's. I mean, at least they have partial ownership of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like the the okay sign. Um, you know, you can use the emojis to text people. Yeah. And I cannot help but use the okay sign for it's any... It's still on the emojis? Yeah, it is. Oh, for any positive response. Controversial. It's not. What we, about thumbs up? When's that going to be bad? Yeah. Pretty soon. <laughs> it has it's to be. so fucking stupid. It is in some other country, correct? Thumbs up is? Yeah. That, when I was young, they always taught us, like, you, middle finger means something in America, but in, like, some other country it doesn't. But, like, thumbs up in some country is real bad. Well, sort of like, like cunt in English? Like the Italians like do the chunt, the chin thing. Yeah. So it's like you, symbols yeah. in different countries mean different things. Oh, okay. Mm. I don't know how bad it really means. You know, if they're really going to get pissed, but I've heard that. It's, I've heard always. This, find out where the thumbs up is bad. I'm never going there. Yeah. <laughs> the kid did thumbs up. Yeah. I want to find out where saying okay is bad. It's... And then, oh, dang it. We're already here. Most of those started off with 4chan, just fucking around. 4chan yep. was just pretend. In Iran, Greece, Russia, Sardinia, and parts of West Africa, the thumbs up is as rude as the middle finger is yeah. in the UK. So no posing in front of the Parthenon, making the thumbs up gesture like a nerdy tourist. Oh, God. I'm doing it. If I go there, I'm, I'm yeah. going to do that for sure. 100%. I'm in West Africa a bunch, and um, we're, um, this, this, is, this is okay. Okay. Yeah. And there's only black people there. Yeah. So nobody's getting mad at my okay symbol. Well, they probably do it too. I've got a picture yeah. of Beyonce doing it. 
I saved a bunch of pictures of uh, black folks doing the OK symbol, and I was uh, sending it to my friends. <laughs> People were saying that there's something wrong with the, the okay. I'm like, you can't take away wrong. something that's been around no. forever that just means okay. Be, and the whole the, the thing about there were some people that were doing it like upside down. So that's a military thing. Oh, okay. Explain yeah. that. Um, it's an asshole. This is an asshole. So the game is um, at any moment, you know, we're, we're talking over here. You're like, oh man, I hurt my leg down here. And if you look at it, I gotcha. And I get to flick you in the dick. Really? Yeah. So like, pop. Wait a minute. But if you, you can say... cancel it if you can get your finger in there. What? Yeah. So it's a game that has existed <laughs> in every single basic training. You, you have to remember that the audience that we're talking about here, like these are guys that are volunteering to go to war. So right. they're not right. Right. But I mean, this, this, for as long as I've been in the military for 16 years, this is an asshole. And the game has always been like, Gotcha. And it's a gotcha moment if they look down at it. So if you do that, that, that thing, and then someone sees it, they have to stick their finger in it or you hit them in the dick. Yep. Okay. Yeah. That's there the game. There are rules to the game. <laughs> what I was trying to tell you like two years ago, I still would play this with my friends, but it became this whole thing. But I'd never heard of this. Doing, it could also be internet 4chan meme shit where they're taking it to another level and giving... Well, do you remember when those cops, uh -huh, that's what they I'm all saying. got in trouble because they were taking a picture and everyone's saying these cops are doing the white power thing. Yeah. But you're saying that's not what that is no. at all. So West Point, at one of the recent graduations, I think Trump spoke there, um, a bunch of the West Point graduates were doing that symbol. Because it's a W and a P. Yeah. Well, that's what the, the, the article was like, oh, no, a bunch of white supremacists are graduating from West Point. And so there's a huge military inv investigation. I mean, Pentagon sending people out to, to research this. And they're like, oh, shoot. It's them playing an asshole game. <laughs> this, is, this is actually not better because now the, our West Point, the most prestigious military academy, our graduates are playing their senior year at a Trump graduation, the asshole game. And the asshole game has consequences, and those are dick slaps. Yep, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you get your finger in there, and then you're safe. That's so fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Oh. We have to, we have to like amuse ourselves. Well, the problem is with someone to be able to write an article like that and say this is a white power symbol, and then all of a sudden these people get labeled as white supremacists, and then there's no repercussion because yeah. once the article's out there, even if you have a retraction. The, art, the original article is still out. And the damage is done. Done. Yeah. Done. And those guys are labeled as white supremacists when they're really just dorks. Yeah. Have you ever read a retraction? Not one. No. No. I don't believe I have. No. I mean, maybe someone showed me one a couple of times. But the, the, when, when someone gets accused of something like that, that's a pretty heinous thing. Like, you, you, a retraction's not going to reach the same amount of people. No. I would be enraged if somebody was like, hey, you're a white supremacist because you did this thing. And I was like... No, I'm not a white supremacist, and um, that thing is an asshole. Um, like, how are we going to e yeah. equal this out here? Because that, that's be not sued. forgivable. They should be sued. Yeah. It's like you're doing some, some irreparable damage to someone. It's just so weird today. Everyone, it's just like, I've, I can't imagine a time where people are more outraged about more things. Yeah, I, I, I really think it's just, you say more people, but I really just think it's a small percentage of people that are yeah. always outraged. Yeah. On both sides all the time. And but I, they I, have an opportunity to talk about it more now. Yeah. Because I mean, we're all connected and they can yeah. piss other people off. I just want to go both sides and like give people big ho hairy ogre troll hugs <laughs> and be like, it's all going to be okay. You know, like we yeah. love you. It's fine. Yeah. Please stop tweeting. <laughs> like Trump, just give me your phone. You're not allowed to tweet anymore. At least he's funny sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes he's fucking funny, man. He makes me laugh. Like one out of 10 times, I will laugh out loud at his tweets. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> For, first of all, sometimes I laugh out loud because I can't believe he's the fucking president. Yeah. I can't believe that guy's the president. Yeah. And then he'll say some ridiculous shit, and I'll just go, "Oh my god!" When he called the girl that he fucked that uh, that porn star, when he called her horse face <laughs> on Twitter, I was like, "This is amazing! This is so crazy!" I'm amazed that that man's the president and right now. President, acting president, right calling now. a woman he fucked horse face. Yeah. Oh my God, it's a, just just the weirdest. Twenty twenty, what yeah. a, what a time! Oh, it's amazing. But I mean, you know, there's, there's some. I wish I could be doing stand up right now. 
you know, if I could do stand up, it would be more fun because it'd be stuff. I mean, so I could much talk material. about it here, but yeah, but actual material that you could work out about today. Holy shit! There's never been a bigger gold mine that we hit. Yeah, and everybody's you, like, you get t- the pans out of the river. I don't think you're allowed to talk about it though. Oh yeah, you are. You are. I mean, yeah, I know are. you think that comedians sh- should be allowed as as I do. I think comedy is um, the best way to address socially sensitive issues. Yeah. Like if you can't. One of the things about the military is there's a lot of dark humor and people kind of look at us as these scarred, um, damaged people because of that humor. But the truth is like we're able to talk about those things through this humor and whether it's like a release for post-traumatic stress or just how we're able to get to the next day, how we're able to go and do some of the things that we do, it's because we're allowed to joke and laugh and burn that stuff off these sensitive times. And I think that's what comedy does to these socially charged issues. Yes. And, um, you know, JP Sears, uh, long haired kind of hippie YouTuber. He, he has been recently kind of attacking how comedians can't make jokes right now and how everything, um, has been charged and there's not a way like you can't make racist, sexist, um, jokes or political jokes whatsoever. Uh, w- without being canceled. And I was like, that's the best time to do it. Yeah, Ari Shafir had the best quote about that. He said, this is a great time for comedy because comedy is actually dangerous again. Ah, oh, that's cool. It's actually dangerous. Yeah. Now. Whereas like five years ago, you would say something, people didn't like it, they didn't come see you. Yeah. Now they're, they'll attack. Yeah. And you have consequences. But I think you just have to structure your bits better. You have to, you have to treat them... Like uh, Doug Stanhope has a great quote that he was talking to me about. He said, "I go over my bits like I'm a defense attorney, like I, I like I am uh, I'm going over my bits like I'm being prosecuted for with you know so, someone's using the the bit against me, and so I have to figure it out like a defense attorney." Yeah. I'm like, "That's a great way of looking at it." Yeah, but what a horrible approach in the process to. It is and it isn't because he writes the joke first and then he figures out how to make it bulletproof. You know, yeah. well, I I have a, my method is usually I shit on myself so hard that by the time that I get to shitting on someone else, yeah. like I've I've already figured out like most of my bits that are controversial they start out with me belittling myself mm-hmm. like in the the most vicious way I can like explaining what a fucking idiot I am and then all the dumb shit that I've done that's related to this thing. Yeah. And that, like, when I wanted to make a joke about Caitlyn Jenner, what I talked about was, the first thing I talked about is how living with all women, I have three daughters and my wife, like, I, and then the way I described it was, it's like, if my manhood was a mountain of marbles, every day they take two. Oh. Like, you have so many marbles. God, it's every day to snatch a marble, snatch a marble. And my whole bit was getting to, I, was want, I wanted to get to, people are saying, he was born a woman. He's always been a woman. I was like, maybe. Or maybe <laughs> if you live with crazy bitches long enough, All the they, time. they fucking turn you into one. Yeah. Maybe you go crazy. Maybe that too. Especially those ones. Especially those ones. <sighs> and so I had to figure out a way to do And so I came up with this thing where they're demons and they, they whisper in his ear in the middle yeah. of the night and they talk him into being a woman. <laughs> but it took forever <laughs> to figure out a way. But, I ha- but it worked. Yeah. Like it, it worked and people didn't even get mad at me for it. I just had to figure out a way to do it where, I, first of all, I belittle myself, and then I explain it in a way where it's not it's not dehumanizing trans people. It's just it's like saying, are we sure? Yeah. Are we sure? We lost a fucking Olympic gold medalist, goddammit. <laughs> we, we lost one of our greatest athletes ever. Yeah. You look in the record book. What does it say now under Bruce Jenner? What does it say? I don't... I don't is he, are you even allowed to say that anymore? I don't think you can. Wikipedia is going to put up whatever they want. Um, which won't be factual, but yeah, how how would the record b- books portray that? I don't know that? how they handle it. If you say that on Twitter, you'll get banned for life. If you call him Bruce Jenner on Twitter, it's dead naming. They'll huh. ban you for life. Good to know. It's hilarious. Yeah, that that vexes me in a different way. Yeah, yeah. The fact that you have to think about a joke and it's political or cancel culture ramifications to make sure it's politically correct enough for it to be bulletproof. Whether you're like your defense attorney, I, that sucks to me. It doesn't. It doesn't, because it is. A, it's an opportunity to make your jokes better. Okay. You could just make them. And and again, if you can get away with it, yeah, it's more sweet. It's more juicy. Yeah. <laughs> but man, I've uh, <coughs> really liked that First Amendment thing, you know. Yeah, I like it and too. And I really like being pe- people being able to say things that make my blood boil. Mm-hmm. And I don't want them to say things that are like, I don't want to drink this coffee when it's lukewarm. 
Right. And I think that's what conversation is when you're polit- when you're everything politically correct is just this disgusting, mm-hmm. gross version. If I'm gonna have champagne, I want it to be freaking cold. Yeah. You know? I like know what you're saying. Perfect. 30, yeah. 36 yeah. degrees. Yeah. Um, I don't want lukewarm coffee. I don't want lukewarm champagne. I, I want perfect. And that's what that's what communication is. And when you start neutering um, how someone can talk, like that that's not being able to express an idea. I you're mean, limiting. I, the counter to that though is that when you do get away with it, it makes it even more powerful. A joke. Like I'm t- yeah, I'm telling you, man, the jokes that I've said on stage that are against political correctness that are good, yeah. like the way I've figured out a way to weave some of them, uh-huh. when they hit, man, they hit like a bomb. Mm. Like the whole room was like, bah! <laughs> like they know, I go, you know I'm right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like I'm not a bad person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I, I have this, this whole chunk that I do on, uh, on banning words. And the whole chunk, it's like it took forever to figure out how to manipulate it and get it to this place where it's you could sneak it in on people and sneak it in on people that would ordinarily you say those words in, in you know, polite company and people would, or assholes would mm-hmm. tense up. But you can get it in. And when you get it in, whoo, it's yeah. sweet. Bam. Yeah, but I'm with you, man. You know, I want whiskey to get me drunk. I don't want fake whiskey. No. Nope. Yeah, I, I'm not interested. Uh. I think there should be consequences. I think, I think the best way to combat things that you disagree with is to say how you feel. Not not to say that person shouldn't be able to say that. That's ridiculous. Yeah, that's dumb. I was watching this video yesterday, <clears throat> and these guys were just saying dumb shit. They were talking about people getting cloned in China. And this lady goes, deplatform that shit. Seriously. She was like, like what? No, I want dumb people to say dumb things. Yes. Especially our, politi- our politicians. Like the, I think the art of listening has been lost. Um, one of the best things about, I think, this podcast is that you're a good listener, right? It takes it takes a decently smart human that has a, a self confidence and, and developed interpersonal skills to listen. That's lost in current co- culture, where um, I, I I'm going to get so visceral, vis, viscerally outraged at something that somebody's saying, I can't even hear their point of view. Um, even if that point of view is wrong, you want that person to say that. Yeah. And the dumber it is, the more I want them to say it because the dumber they sound, and the more. We collective logical reasonable person people are like, well, that person's really dumb, and his ideas are not going to work. So let's not follow him anymore, and then we're able to to yeah process. or have a counter. This is what's wrong with what that person said. Yeah. But the idea you're supposed to deplatform them it's so like, bad. It's so stupid because then what if someone thinks that they should deplatform you? And yeah. I think you probably should be deplatformed for telling people they should be deplatformed. How about that? Yeah. If you're the person that, if that's more dangerous than some dummy thinking that they're cloning people in China. And by the way, they might be cloning people in China. <laughs> you still know. I mean, who the fuck? Oh, look, they can clone people. We yeah. know that. We and know if anybody's going to do it. Yeah, they're going to do it. They're China, probably doing China it. China would be doing it. They're probably doing it. Look, I, I mean, it's the, probably the least of our concerns. You know, I mean, as far as overpopulation goes, I mean, China's trying not to have as many people. They, they, they mean, they had a, the whole one-child policy forever. Yeah. It turned out to be disastrous and tilted everything extraordinarily male. I mean, I would not be, want to be a man in China trying to find a woman. No. Right? It's, it, it, I mean, I don't know if they balanced that out yet, but that was no. a real issue for a long time. I wouldn't want to be in China at all. No. Because um, I'm a big fan of... Freedom. Not, yeah. <laughs> yeah, freedom's yeah. nice. Pretty, pretty, it's pretty, pretty powerful. It's goddamn important. When you say deplatforming people, you you don't think you're taking away freedom, but you are. Yeah. You're taking away a little bit of freedom. And I, I think it's extra important right now where people have been isolated for this, whatever, six, five months now from COVID, where they're creating echo chambers when they're, when they curate their own information access we're like, I'm not going to listen to this guy, or I want this guy to be platformed, or any of the social medias obviously are are limiting what kind of voices are being heard. Um, while you're sitting there at home for the past four months, and you're just in this echo chamber of your own ideas and the people that agree with you, it, it magnifies and radicalizes what you believe. And there's no logical sound soundboard. There's no bounce off. There's no pressure check. There's no refiners fire to those ideas because it's an echo chamber yeah and like you're reading the exact same things on twitter you're seeing the same things on facebook you're looking at the same things on instagram then you turn on the tv and of course they're saying all the same things that you already agree with and they're just these ideas continue and gain momentum and they're not real because they've never 
been tested against anything that disagrees with them or that, that contradicts them. And all, I think all ideas have to go through that process for them to be real. Is that, that, that refiner's fire of, is this really going to work? Well, right. let's apply pressure and find out. Yeah, there's, <clears throat> there's this defund the police thing that's going around right now. My friend Matt had this funny thing that happened. He has a son. His son's about 25, I think he said. And uh, his son uh, was talking about defunding the police, and he's arguing with him. His son's, you know, real liberal mm-hmm. and the whole deal. Uh, then his son was staying at the, they have a beach house, and it's an old house. And the house was making, like, some crazy noises. He ran outside and called his dad, and he said, there's something going on in the house. I'm going to call the police. He goes, I thought you wanted to defund the police. Uh. He goes, now de- the fucking house is haunted and you're calling the police? Yeah. Well, you went from defund the police to the house is making noise, let me call the cops. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty fast jump. Uh, I mean, that's not only idiotic, it's dangerous. It's and- dangerous and stupid and it's everything. <clears throat> it's everything wrong with these ideas that just get propagated online with that no one really thinks through, but then they get they become a thing that you, if you're cool, you say it. If yeah. you're in the right group, you say it. And th- that's what defund the police is. And and even fighting against those ideas, for some reason, you... Like, if I I believe def- defunding the police is the dumbest thing you could possibly do, do I think there might be problems within law enforcement that yeah. should be addressed? For sure. For sure. Like, how do you fix those? You need funding. You need funding, right? Like, um, I have a school that's underperforming. Kids are not graduating from high school. Do you know what we should do? We should take money from the school, and we should give them fewer teachers. And let's see if that's going to help. No, that's not going to help. Right? You have to give them more teachers. You have to give them more funding. You have to give them more access to information. And then maybe that school starts performing a little better. A, a police department is no, they're just humans, right? They're imperfect. They need training. They need funding. They need support. Right now they need morale and they need people. Um, and they need know. to get rid of the people that suck. Yeah. They need those things too. And one of the best ways to do that is through training. Yeah. You weed people out. You find out who can't cut it. That's what, that's what it's supposed to be for. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> One of the best things about special operations is that there's so much training and process, the refiner's fire, the chaff in the wind, like you throw that stuff up and the crap blows away and the good stuff comes back down. Then you take that stuff and you go and carry it into a fire and then you heat it and then you pull it out and you pound it. And then you heat it again, and you pound it, then you heat it, you pound it. And what you're left with at the end is this pretty cool thing. If any of that is... Um, with law enforcement, the, all of those things can only occur through training. And and like, if you want to test somebody, if you want to check, if you want to find racism, like having them show up to work for eight hours and letting them hop in a car and run, run out, um, you're never going to know what's inside of there. The only time that you get access, that you get peaks of that is it, at these stressful, emotionally drained moments. Yes. Right? And the only time that you can create those is through training. I've been arguing that we should have that for all of our leaders. Yeah. Like when we were talking about the mayor of California mm. or the the mayor of Los Angeles and the governor of California and the people that are deciding you can't trick or treat this year. This is the new thing. The one fucking holiday <laughs> where you have to wear a mask. You're supposed to wear a mask. Yeah. And they, for whatever reason, they've decided they're going to save people by stopping little kids, the ones who have the least problem with this disease from trick or treating. It's fucking asinine. It's yeah. so dumb. And I think part of it is because the people that are in that position, the people that are in the position of control, they don't have to be tested. They don't have to show their character. They just have to win a popularity contest that no one wants to enter. No, no one wants to be the fucking mayor of L.A. Who's, who's entering? No one wants to be the governor of California. Well, I mean, How many self, people? Self-serving people are yeah. entering. You know, Mayor Adler here in Austin. You know, like, yeah, the, the, same the, shit. Yeah, just get, get out of here. Can, yeah. is, it, is there a public servant that wants to step up? You know, I want Eminem to sing that song. Will the real public servant step up? There's, there's nobody. But they, they, they get so scrutinized, and it's such a ruthless business. Yeah. That the only people that you get left are these wishy-washy, milky people. Yeah, I, I do wish that you know political parties were afraid of the people again. You yeah. Know, that 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 created a really healthy balance where um, they understand that they are represent that they represent their constituents, and their job is to do what their people want. Um, once they get into this certain level of political power, they kind of just do whatever they want and they forget that they're supposed to be representing the people. I've never seen California so charged right now against California. Like people yeah. are mad, you know, the protests in Long Beach and San yeah. Diego and, uh, Mar Largo, like it's crazy. The number of people that are coming out and being like, I'm not okay with what's happening right now. 
and they shouldn't be. It's insane. For... Well, they've given dorks the ability to tell people they can't work. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. And that's Governor Newsom and Mayor Garcia. Those guys are dorks. Yeah. And they're in control of whether or not people can take risks and work. How and can somebody tell you not to work? Exactly. It's not scientific. It's not politically correct. It's Even not... if it were scientific, yeah. how can you tell me not to work? Right. But you can't. Well, the idea is that you're putting other people at risk by working. Because if you get infected, other people are going to get infected too. Yeah. This is this is the idea behind. It. But it's a super flawed idea. I'll, I'll, I'll super. I'll one. I'll volunteer to inject my neck with a hypodermic needle full of COVID, compared to my children starving to death because I don't work. Yeah. And and some like the salon owners are like, if I don't open up, I'm I'm already four months behind on my on my mortgage or my rent um, to include this building. Um, I'm going to be homeless, as are my kids, and you're going to be dealing with that next month if I don't open right now. So people are just leaving the state. They're like, yeah. well, I'm going to go somewhere where we have freedom. And that's why so many people are coming here to Texas. Yeah, well, they better remember why they left. Exactly. That's important. I wanted to talk to you about that. And I'm, I want to have Texas politicians on, too, try to explain what the checks and balances are in this state that have kept it from being fucked up and given it the freedom that it enjoys right yeah. now. And one of the reasons why people are coming here in the first place. In droves. Yeah, I mean, like from New York and California, I've, I I argue if you walk downtown Austin, um, if you walked even up north like um, Lamar, Palmer, and you you just like, hey, where are you from? Four out of five people are going to be from California and New York, (laughs) and like you're not you're not from Texas to include myself and you, Mm -hmm. and you like all all of us. Where are you from originally? California, Central California. How did you get out here? Um. After 9-11 happened, I enlisted and, you know, Georgia, Fort Bragg deployments, Georgia, Fort Bragg deployments, that cycle. Um, when I was fighting, I, uh, I liked Texas and I could kind of live anywhere if I was going to go to New Mexico and do my training camps. Um, my wife is from the South, so she wanted to live in the South. She's from Louisiana. Um, she took a dog, she was a government contractor. So she took a government contracting job here and, um, you know, it was, we knew we were going to be in Texas. We didn't know where, and Austin felt like California. So that's really how we ended up here is, Mm. um, they have a special opera. They have a huge outside of Fort Bragg, North Carolina. This has the largest group of special operations in, in the entire country. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. How'd that happen? Um, I, Texas has the ideals that we kind of stand for. I actually have a present for you from the Texas special operations community. They're like, wait a second. So um, they, uh, I, when I say they, they come here in droves, we, we have hundreds of green berets in the state of Texas in from their border patrol workers that are still serving as green berets. They're police officers, firefighters, uh, work for FBI, but they live in Texas so they can be Texans that are Green Berets that then have their their other shenanigan awesome jobs. It's huge. Wow. Yeah, you're surrounded by them. I didn't know. Well, they figured out it's awesome here. Mm, it, it is awesome. It's very unusual. I, I almost feel uncomfortable talking about how great it is here. Yeah. I'm going to wow. make you uncomfortable in a little bit when I give you okay. a present. Okay. Give it to me now. Fuck uh-huh. it. All right. So we can okay. do this in Texas. Oh, it's a gun. Um, well, these are cigars. <laughs> I know they're important, and it just says, from the Special Operations Forces, the oppressed liber and range lead the way. It's our motto. All right. Thank you. Liberators of the oppressed. Mm. Damn, that smells good. All right. One of these is yours, and one of these is yours. Oh, Jamie. I have to see which one's. All right, so this one's yours. There's a pocket constitution. So anytime you're like, man, what are we supposed to do in this instance? You can a just... pocket constitution. I love it. Yeah. You just, you just reference real fast. Damn, this smells great. You know, we're talking about the First Amendment. Congress shall make no law respecting any establishment or religion, prohibiting the free exercise thereof, abridging the freedom of speech, to press the right of the people to peacefully assemble, petition the government for redress of grievances. So this has all of them in here. Right. So this gun, I, I took, it has been shot, so I zeroed it for you. Beautiful. Um, got you a holster, Welcome to too. Texas. They bring you guns. Yeah. It's got a loophole, loophole delta point oh, red dot on there. I love loophole. So this is like ready to, ready to uh, go. Ready to go. It's zeroed. It's um, FN five hundred nine compact. Hala. Hala. 
Jamie, you got a gun now. Are you yep. excited? Jamie, so you that is to... no longer my gun. Thank that you. is your gun. Thank you very much. Jamie, yeah. have you ever shot a gun? I've shot your gun. Oh, that's well, right. Jamie, times. can you come over here? I shot it. I haven't shot it very yeah. much. So I you didn't... shot rifles, right? Uh, that yeah, Windmap, that yeah, cannon. That, yeah. I didn't know um, Dude, this is a dope what kind of shooter holster. you were. So this adjusts to, I can put this on anything in like your bag or a fanny pack. Um, if not, I'll get you a concealed carry holster like that. I love this holster. Thanks. It, yeah, it's, it's pretty handmade. So this is an FN 503 single stack, nine millimeter. So this is like what you could carry here around Austin. And, uh, but this is very nice, compact gun. A lot of people right now uncomfortable. They've got guns. Are, are you uncomfortable? Uh, nope. This is your first Jamie's gun? Fine. Yeah. Come here. Come here. Come here. Give, give, me, a hug. Give, me, give me a hug. Give him a hug. Come here. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Does anyone to get a gun Listen. From? Boom. Yeah. Welcome to Texas. Where to get a gun from? You can say, I got my first gun from Tim motherfucking Kennedy. Yeah. How about that? And you never forget that I was because you came to Texas. We're going to go to the range with Tim and Alex Jones. How about that? There's Ooh. A, uh, <laughs> Texas only, uh, I think it's a Halloween thing. You can shoot zombies. You can get in a group and shoot zombies. Not with real guns, obviously, but like some zombie kill it. Like real people probably dressed up like zombies that'll take paintball hits. Really? Think, yeah. yeah. And somebody said it to be like, let's go. We, we have like um, responsive targets that are built like zombies. So you shoot them and like blood comes out. Yeah, and you I've can, seen those. And we have, um, they call them heavy metal zombie competitions. So it's like a three gun competition. So you have to shoot 45, 308, and 12 gauge. Um, and you only headshots count. So as you it's like the zombie yeah. safari, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like fun, right? Yeah. Oh, wish I came here years ago. Zombie mm -hmm. Safari Dallas is open every Friday and Saturday in October. Well, we're going. Yeah, we'll have to go to that. Weather's cooling off, so we're going to do a lot more helicopter pig hunts. Twenty four hundred rounds kill zombies. Now, when you do the helicopter pig hunts, um, how do you guys gather up to meet? Do you have someone? It drives after the helicopter. So it depends on where we're going and what we're doing. So some some ranches, um, we are exterminating. Mm. So, so they don't even gather up the meat. No. Oh wow. And some of them are disgusting. Like, yeah, but the meat's still good. No, even it's if not gross. Really? No. Why? They're like like you get an old male, like maggoty, rancid, uh, gross, tough meat. I don't want that. Mm. You get like a young sow. There yeah. You go. But the, those old ones, though, seriously, if you put them on a smoker and you do it right and you brine them, they still taste good. Okay. Just Why, talk to when a you have chef. A five billion pigs in Texas, why would you cook a nasty one? Or you could just go get a nice sweet one over there. And there's so many of them. Like, mm. if we go next week, I take you, you would shoot 50 pigs. Why, from a helicopter. From a helicopter. Why would you pick a gross one? I see what you're saying, but it just seems like you don't want to waste the meat, though. I mean, yeah. there are people that would so, like that. We'll, we'll, make we'll, sausage we'll, out we'll of talk it. about no, no, no. no. Um, really? Food wise, if we're going to compare food meat to, mm -hmm. so on a on a farm, 25 percent of your crop is destroyed by feral pigs. Yes, every year. It's a real so problem here. If you're if you're if you had a million dollars, you're automatically off the top two hundred fifty thousand dollars of your crop is gone to feral pigs. So you as a rancher, you're like seen a uh, heavy-handed hairy ogre like me they're like wait <laughs> you'll come and kill pigs on my property and you don't i don't have to do anything they'll, they'll welcome you how, uh, how many times have you done this i don't know like thousand <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i have no idea a thousand times from helicopters yeah. oh what a great place to be yeah but it's different shooting though, because instead of a pot, uh, so if something's moving fast, mm. um, like a vehicle, if I was going to be engaging something moving, let's say from the right to the left, you lead I'm gonna, it. yeah, you have to lead it. Well, when you're in a helicopter, you actually have to give a what a negative lead. So you're going to shoot behind it. You're going too fast. Yeah. So whatever speed, if you're going, let's say oh. 80 knots, you're going to have to be behind it about about the tail and the speed of that helicopter is going to make up the difference to give you a middle impact. Oh, interesting. Yeah, how, how fast is the helicopter going when you're shooting? Um, depends on the pilot. And like sometimes that's you as a shooter. You're just kind of having to judge how fast you're going. And, um, you know, Shane who will fly with, he's a great pilot. And, uh, so he'll like camp the, he the helicopter at like a 45 degree angle and open up the shooter door towards. So we're only probably going like 30 knots. 
So you can What's all, a knot in miles an hour? Like uh, one and a half. Why do they use knots? I don't know. It's naval and aviation mm-hmm. use it. Just to confuse people. Yeah. Yeah. But at that speed, you can aim, point of aim, point of impact, and right. just rack them up. Yeah. Wow. Have you shot an FN 509 before? No. They're really good. Yeah? Yeah. Striker fire. You shoot Glock? Yeah. It's real similar trigger, a little bit more combat feely. Um, that's the compact, so you can, I don't know, do you carry yet? I don't have a concealed carry. We're going to fix that. Okay. Like super fast. All right. Excellent. Okay. Good to hear. Yeah. You can't, you can't be here. Like, <laughs> I gave well, you concealed a whole- open carry state, right? Open carry is dumb. Please don't do that. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like very uh, antagonistic almost. Yeah. Uh, but like you, that's, um, wh- while I believe you have the right to do that, it's also one of those things that's like, it's also dumb to do it. Mm. From a tactical perspective- Right. Why would you be sitting here with the thing that you want right. to protect you exposed to the whole entire world and telegraphing? Like if I walk into a room, that's like the first guy I'm like, eh. one, you're probably useless. Two is um, I'm concerned about you, not as an asset, but rather as a threat. Right. Like there's, um, I don't, there's not, a, if you went out to any any of the guys out here or any of my friends and you're like, do you open carry? they will be like, ah! no, that's dumb. I'm not going to do that. Well, that's that thing that like I was getting into about the protests when people were showing up at these uh, Black Lives Matter protests with uh, AKs around their neck. I'm yeah. Like, what are you doing? Like, do you know how many you... times they have ac- accidentally discharged their weapon into the crowd? Oh, I'm sure. It's, it's, it's happened like a dozen times. I'm sure. It's, yeah. it's, it's heartbreaking because yeah. like I respect that they're trying to like I fully believe in protesting, love peaceful protests. I even like that that kind of bravado of open carry in that sense where they're like really i think a a freedom not exercised is a freedom that's going to atrophy and die Uh, one of the reasons why i love comedy is because um you are pushing the limit of what people are comfortable with especially with the first amendment so you're kind of torn on open carry in that sense i think it's super dumb but i like people exercising their freedoms interesting yeah Mm. i see what you're saying though uh the right person like i one i would never be at a protest i've um, while I like, support it, I would, I, it's dangerous to be there right now. Um, so I wouldn't, the cost versus gain of what happens at those peaceful protests. Um, and then the, the thought of even open carrying is, is idiotic. I agree with that. I, I, I feel like showing up at one of those protests with a gun, like unless they're coming to you and trying to take your house or break down your door, why do you have a, why are you walking around with a gun? Just, no. You're supposed to, no. if it's supposed to be a peaceful protest, and the idea is like, what if someone comes to try to disrupt that peaceful protest? Like, you're inviting them almost with that gun. Yeah, I mean, we, we had a, a, a poor um, kid killed here in Austin. Um, he had an AK, and a poor Uber driver got in the middle of a protest, and he's like, "Holy crap!" His his you know when he dropped, he had a drop off, and he went to go do another pickup, and Uber like automatically routes. The, the way to go. So he's following his little Uber route and he turns and he's like, oh man, I'm in the middle of a protest. He's a soldier from Fort Hood right here. And uh, he's concealed carrying in, in, in his Uber vehicle. And um, he gets stuck in the protest and the protesters just swarm his car. And this, this, this kid that died, um, he's actually a really neat kid because, you know, his, his girlfriend um, was black and he's there to support her. Um, she had a bunch of physical, physical impairments and she was he, in a wheelchair. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, he's like a neat kid, you know, like not smart. He's open carrying at a protest, you know, and he was saying kind of some inflammatory things beforehand, but like, I think his point and his purpose was really good and pure and like trying to do the right thing. Right. Um, but then he runs up to the side of a car and points a gun at an Uber driver that is scared and confused and he gets shot. Yeah. That's yeah, the recipe for disaster. I saw so many different versions of that story too, where people had twisted the facts. People had said he was unarmed. People, the, the guy who got shot. Yeah. Pe- people were saying that the guy who did it was a white supremacist who drove into the protest on yeah. purpose. There was so many. And the different- video was edited where yeah. it looked like the guy was making a right hand turn and he like sped up because he was trying to get around a person, and they cut right there because it looks like the guy's speeding up to go into the crowd. But super, when you watch the whole video, it's really obvious what that poor kid was trying to do. The driver. Um, I saw a fascinating um, this PhD on communication broke down from the initial 
release of the information of the story, how it immediately started being um, distorted. Yeah. For, for two different sides. Mm -hmm. Like I'm going to leave out this detail. I'm going to include this t detail. Yeah. And by the time you got, you know, the, the game telephone where you're like, Hey, mm -hmm. um, here's this catchphrase. And by the time it gets all the way around the room, it doesn't sound like any semblance of what it did when it started. When you got to the final version, I'm super enraged at one version and I'm super enraged at another version, but neither of them are true. And like that, that's what every single issue is happening from defunding the police to black lives matter to Antifa. It's like, can we just be reasonable and talk yeah. about what's really happening? And we have some real good examples of what the worst case scenarios are in this country right now. And one of them is Portland. Yeah. Like Portland is one of the best case scenarios of a completely unreasonable, ridiculous shit that's going on every single day. Yeah. 101 days of protest. That, guy, that fucking mayor up there is the most progressive mayor in the country. And they're like, fuck you, resign. We're going to burn your house down. Police. He had yeah. to move out because yeah. they're going to burn his place down. Well, they tried to burn down his lobby. They were throwing fiery things into his lobby. They were yeah. lighting fires in front of the street in front of his house, having dance parties in front of his apartment building. So I was just coming back from Africa on an SFA mission, um, a security forces assistance, uh, like a, we, the military go to places that have insurgents and we try to legitimize the process of government. So in counterinsurgency, there's like all of these different missions from, um, joint combined exercises for training to foreign internal defense to SFA security forces, um, assistance. And I'm over there doing a counterinsurgency mission and I'm coming back and I'm seeing the same kind of horrible, dangerous recipe in Portland. You know, the, the, the same types of organization and structure and, and it's an insurgency is a charged idea that, you know, an insurgency as the DOD defines it is a, an organized group trying to delegitimize or overthrow a constitutional government. Like that's how the DOD defines it. And I think if you went to almost anyone in Portland, they're like, what are you trying to do right now? Like, that's what they're trying to do. Yeah. Right. Like that's what they they're, believe. They're open about it. Yeah. Which is all right. And that creates a really hard, um, how do you combat that? Cause you have to combat the grievances and the ideas you have to, in as, as dangerous as it is, those ideas are like a cancer because when the truth and information is being uh, adjusted, just like we talked about with the shooting here in Austin, where you have two different versions and some people are in the echo chamber of only hearing one side of it, it just keeps radicalizing more and more and catching more momentum. And then the reason that they're there is is so convoluted with, you know, if you're, are, are you there for Black Lives Matter or are you there... Um, to, you know, to, to fight systemic racism. Are you here to like, what are you protesting about? Like, I think you'd get a lot of different answers. Yeah. That's dangerous. Like now, now, now you're just there to do damage. Like you're not really trying to do anything that's good. What's also exciting. This is the other thing about it. When, when you're allowed to throw fire into the lobby of the apartment building where the mayor lives yeah. and no one stops you and you're out in front and people are playing music and dancing and everyone's going, Black Lives Matter. There's excitement to that, right? Something's yeah. happening. And then when you're talking about people that are out of work, the economy is fucked. No one knows what to do. Everyone's scared. COVID's killing a certain percentage of people. You're, you you can't do anything about it. There's no vaccines. There's all this tension in the air. And then you have this movement. Yeah. And then this is the most exciting thing that's happening. And, and then for people that don't have jobs and can't go anywhere, what the fuck do you want them to do? They're going to get sucked up into that, especially if it aligns with their political ideologies, if they're a left-leaning person. And they're like, look, we have a real chance for a real revolution here. And this yeah. is, But what, what they don't understand, what I was talking about Seattle – you're doing the same thing that you would hate for people to do. You're taking over businesses with force. You're, you're occupying land that you don't deserve. You're stealing buildings. You're literally occupying buildings that other people built. And then once you get there, you're establishing boundaries. 
You're putting up barriers. Yeah. You have a police force that will attack and brutally beat people up for just filming what they perceive as injustices yeah. or what they're going to put on the internet. And then people get shot and you're calling the fucking cops. You call the police and ambulances when people get shot there. Yeah, Do you know how goddamn crazy this is? It's so poorly thought out across the board. And if you do that, if you take over an area, what's to stop people from doing that to you? You've already set a precedent. Yeah. You've already said we could do this with force. We're going to move in with no law behind us, with no court ruling, with no reasonable discourse. We're going to move in with force and we're going to take over an air with numbers and threats. And then what's going to stop someone from doing that to you? Yeah. Nothing, you fuck. You've already set a precedent. You've already said this is how it's done. Yeah. And then it's just chaos and anarchy. Exactly. Like it just gets worse. Exactly. Then, and the more violent and larger group will win. So from a the 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 mission of counterinsurgency like how how do you fight those ideas is stability and security right if we want um to see positive change in in you know kind of destitute poverty stricken areas of the country um urban areas where like really you want to talk about systemic racism you start looking at like detroit yes. and baltimore and chicago um how do you fix that it's not fewer p police officers it's more police officers the way that you fix it is providing providing stability and security in an area so that then businesses can flourish, capitalism arrives, more job opportunities, more wealth, more education, more um, like immediately in 10 years, you, you'll see the the transformation of a block when a when a good business comes in and good things start happening. That business can't go there if it's dangerous, if it's rioting and it's looting. So if you look at every one of the cities that had serious riots, um, in, you know, from like Rodney King, how bad those areas still are. It takes like 50, 60 years if they ever bounce back to come back from that. So if you're like, yo, go black lives matter, but then you're going in rioting, you are absolutely condemning yourself to more poverty. And then you go and defund the police and you remove the one thing that's going to provide stability and security out in that area that will bring in commerce, that will bring in business and jobs. Like you, you you're, screwing yourself it's just so hard for people to see that because it's a long game yeah and in the short term they want justice and they're like no justice no peace and they just want to light shit on fire and i i understand that they're angry and i understand that sentiment but it so no one's explaining that this is this is how this plays out you're literally going to fuck that area yeah for a long time yeah yeah it takes a long and a lot of money is going to be have to be spent in yeah. order to bring it back so the money the money is a hard thing um Insurgencies are really cheap. You know, if um, if I wanted to ruin something, you know, it doesn't take a lot of effort for me to destroy it. For me to build and protect something, that takes a lot of manpowers and manpower and hours. Um, insurgencies are also way more successful than a you know conventional type war. Um, even if it's just war of ideas, not that we're in a civil war. Thank God we don't have like geographic lines that these radical groups could align themselves with. Because then we'd be in a different problem. Um, it takes not just manpower, funding. Uh, you know, like if you're going to flood, say, Baltimore with police officers, that's a lot of money. And it would take a long time for a business to feel like it's safe and secure for them to go in there and start affecting positive change, opening more stores, more jobs, more jobs, more wealth, more wealth, more education, more education, better schools. And then, boom, we have a flourishing community where people can prosper. Um, but it takes, you know, one idiot with a Molotov cocktail to bring that all crumbling down again. Yeah, and you're starting from scratch or below scratch. Yeah. 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 And that's where we are. Yep. I mean, this is a, a trying time for us in, in the weirdest of ways because I don't think anybody anticipated everything going this far south so quickly. Yeah, it's Would, not done. Oh, this is yours. What's that? Oh, my constitution. Mm -hmm. Back up, fuckers. Yeah. I got the papers. Yeah. I got the just how it is. Independence. Not for interpretation. It's just mm. as it is. Just read the words. Uh, just amazing that these guys saw human nature and how it could be fucked up and how they could r ruin everything so far in advance. Do you smoke cigars? I don't. You don't at no. all? No, I'm, I'm a pretty straight edge-ish person. Don't drink at all? I'll have like a, a glass of wine every other night. It's good for your blood. It's good for your heart. Allegedly. 
That's what they say. Yeah, that's the extent of it. Yeah, but you know those are like epidemiology studies. Yeah, it's like uh, how many people have a glass of wine every other night? How are they doing? Yeah. And look at them. It's not like they've proven a glass of wine does X or Y. It also this tastes some, really good with elk. Tastes good. Yeah, <laughs> I like it with steak. Yeah. yeah, I'm a big fan of red meat and and uh, red wine. Yeah, it's a good combination. But that's the I have a big pretty liquor cabinet of nothing that I ever drink that people just mm. give me. So when people come over, I'm like, yeah, you can... No mushrooms, no psychedelics. No, no I've never pot. done anything ever. What? <laughs> nope. That might be part of your problem. It, I have lots of problems. <laughs> <laughs> There's no doubt that, that that is on the long, <clears throat> dignified list of Have you thought problems. about it? Thought about diving into it? Man, I have, um, I have teenage daughters that, you know, one's a freshman in college, one's a senior in high school. And, um, you know, if I ever thought about it, it's go and then I have a, an 11-month-old and a 5-year-old. So, dude, you do a lot of fucking. Yeah, uh, <laughs> all of them will be through school before I ever thought about it. Mm, I um, get it. My dad was a narcotics officer. Oh, that's what it is. And uh, which was funny because I had f like intentionally just to make him mad. I had friends that were drug dealers, but I would never, <laughs> I would never use. But I'd be around it all the time. That's interesting. How'd yeah. you avoid it? Um, being an athlete, being a martial artist, being a fighter. Uh, I, I was more into, you know, being able to beat somebody up than not. What was your first martial art that you got into? Uh, sh karate. What kind? Uh, Shotokan. Oh. And then uh, I went to Japanese jiu-jitsu after that. Taikaria Kia jiu-jitsu. And I did that for a while. And then I ended up at the pit. Hawaiian Kempo with John Hackleman and mm. Chuck. And San I, Luis Obispo? Uh, yep. yep. Arroyo Grande and San Luis Obispo. Yeah, you know, and then uh, that's that. Uh, my it was actually Jake Shields that brought me to the pit. Really? Yeah, he uh, showed up. Um, so I was like, uh, the big guy at the gym and grappling, right? I like, wrestled, and so I could go in and kind of smash a lot of the people. And then this kind of awkward, weird white kid comes in and just like map, like mops the floor with my soul. And I was like, who are you? Where did you come from? And what did you do? Like, what, what is this? He's like, well, it's, it's like catch wrestling, you know, it's just kind of like jujitsu and, and wrestling kind of put together, you know, and, and, um, but you know, then we fight and I think I was 16 at this 15, 15, 16 at this time. He's like, and we, in San Luis Obispo, there's these other guys that do it. This Gan McGee and Scott Adams and Chuck Liddell mm -hmm. and, uh, Antonio, Antonio Banuelos, Cruz Gomez. And, uh, and I was like, cool i want to go there so i went there and got my brains bashed in for forever that yeah was, hackleman's was, an interesting character himself he is he's, he's quite a character yeah he he's a great coach though um especially back then um he invested a lot and he was old school mm -hmm. and i and guys like chuck and myself and we needed old school uh, like now that coaches can't do or say the things that John would say back then. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I, I love John now, but you know, he was not a kind coach. Well, he's still training Glover, right? Yeah. He's got Glover. And then Alex Pereira is with them now mm -hmm. as well, which I thought was very interesting. Yeah. Court McGee is still in and out. <clears throat> oh, is he? Yeah. <clears throat> Court's had some injuries, right? Yeah. 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 He, I think his whole career has kind of been like that. Yeah. That was a guy that was always on my radar of like, I thought I might fight. Cause when I went to Jackson's, you know, his, clear break separation mm -hmm. um and then and he's he, in the pit in utah right mm -hmm. yeah yeah but yeah he's that gotta guy's, stay healthy he's a he's in he's one of those guys that almost died and came back because of drugs and there's a few of those guys that are almost unbreakable they're like they 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 almost die and come back and then they become these insanely disciplined people and he's one of those yeah is that good though to almost die no, from drugs i don't think it's good okay i think Whatever led him to drugs, mm. he probably could have squashed those demons with training. Yeah. But the problem with there's many obsessions and addictions that come from almost the same energy that could be applied to something that makes you incredibly successful. It's these the, where your brain is fixated, whether it's on gambling mm -hmm. or whatever it is, whatever these addictions are. They could ruin your life or you could decide you're going to be the baddest motherfucker that ever lived. Yeah. And it's the same kind of addictions. You know, I've talked to Tyson about this. I've talked to a bunch of fighters about this that have these addictive tendencies. 
but those tendencies are also obsessive tendencies, which can be applied to something that is ultimately positive, like yeah, training. That's what I do. Yeah. I have a huge, I've never had any addiction um, to negative stuff, but I think if you looked at my life from how I train, how I shoot, how I work, how I run my companies, you're like, this, this guy's a psychopath with the, the, the disciplined regiment of, of literal pain and suffering that I intentionally put my body through. Um, and that's to stay productive. And so it's all constructive. Yeah. Um, I, I always joke that if I didn't do martial arts and fight and go into the military where all of those things were encouraged, like, yeah, we want you to fight, you know, we want you to kind of be a violent badass. Um, I would be in prison, you know, I'd like for sure. Um, probably There's a lot of people like that. Out yeah. There. Yeah. A lot of people, a lot of people that are in prison that I, to this day, feel like if we could have got them when they were young yeah. and said, Hey, listen, listen, this is the path you're on, yeah. but this is, this is a way better path you can get on. It's fucking exciting yeah. and it's going to feel good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's painful. It's hard. It's so rewarding though. Yeah. So rewarding. Trying to talk, convince somebody like to, to bite into this way of life. Um, you know, and, and I, I think like, you know, hard work, uh, the, all the things that you want are on the far side of hard work and, and getting somebody to believe that where they have to make all these kind of small decisions where am I, you know, waking up early? Am I not going to be drinking? Am I not going to be doing drugs? Am I going to be training? Am I going to, all of these tiny little decisions start adding up and, um, like the Titanic slowly turning the boat, you know, but had they started turning the boat earlier, they wouldn't have struck an iceberg and they all wouldn't have died. Right. right, right. Um, but so you have to start making all these incremental adjustments and like, imagine what the Titanic would have been had it not struck the, the iceberg, like a connection between two worlds, you know, like the poverty being able to move to a new world and the rich elite being co-mingling and like, who knows what the world would have been like had that boat not sunk. And it would have only taken these small early adjustments to see the whole entire change of its course. Uh, but the belief, right? You're at the helm and you're telling me to, ch to start moving, to moving the, the boat. And I'm like, I don't, I don't want to, like, I don't need to, yeah. all the excuses are there, but it is so rewarding to be on the far side of all of that. It's just, people need to, they need to know about these procrastination demons that haunt your yeah. mind and they will rob you of all possible success of everything they'll, they'll steal everything. everything from you yeah and like w when people come to our our courses um the the biggest thing that we're trying to impart that like i'm not gonna in in two and a half days i'm not gonna turn somebody into a great fighter i'm not gonna turn somebody into a great shooter in two and a half days um, but what they're gonna learn is they're gonna learn their assets and their liabilities and they're going to learn about themselves about what do they need to do that we're gonna put them on a course a direction a path all the things that they need to do to positively change their life. And it becomes this, this I'll use addictive, like this all-consuming passion to want to know that your family's safe, to not live in fear, to know that you're healthy. You're like, I have less body fat. I'm feeling kind of like a badass. I like want to flirt with my wife a little bit more. Now I'm having more sex. Now my energy's going up. Now I'm sleeping better. And the next day is even better. So I can train a little bit more. I can work a little bit more. I can shoot a little bit more. And then like the next day I'm even better. And then like just 1% incremental changes now two months removed, you're like, who is this person? You just lost 20 pounds of fat. Like you've got calluses on your hands. You don't have that fat baby chub on your face anymore. And more importantly, I see life in your eyes where you showed up two months ago and there's like this ghost skeleton of a human. Now I see a person. It's rad. Like I, and I get to see this transformation of people. It's one of the favorite things about what I do. Yeah, it's so hard for people that don't do it to understand that if you do push your body, it gets stronger and you grow, yeah. and then you literally feel better. I, I tried to explain it to a friend of mine. I said, imagine if you have a race car, and the race car is 400 horsepower and a certain width tire and a certain kind of suspension, but literally you can make it have more horsepower and handle better, and all you have to do is work. Yeah. You just have to push it and the tires will widen and the suspension will toughen and it'll be m more more pliable around corners. The, the, the engine will get stronger. The exhaust will sound better. It'll be more rewarding to drive. You can do this. Yeah. You can do it with your body. Like your body literally is and like a race mind. car. Yes, and your mind. Your mind goes along with it, which is yeah. another thing that bums me out where really smart people don't want to work out because they think it's like 
they think it's uh, for meatheads, or they think it's uh, it's a stupid egotistical pursuit. I'm like, no, you you literally are all connected. Yeah. Your brain and your body are one. Total, total human condition. Yes. And, Just because uh, you look, if you're a, a an awesome pianist, right, and you're really good at playing the piano. You have to understand that that's not just your fingers, right? That's your mind. Your mind is also making you play the piano. Yeah. Well, guess what? If you were in better cardiovascular shape, you probably could do that even better because then the whole system would work better. Everything would work better. And this is the same with everything. CNS is firing. Yes, you know, everything. Everything is going quicker. You know, And guys like Rachmaninoff, big, huge, powerful hands that could play these big, huge chords, Like his body conditioned to be able to do those things. It wasn't like immediately he had this one and a half octave reach, right? He learned and his hands literally grew to be able to play chords mm. that if you and I go and play them right now, we have Carpal's Tunnel in six months. Yeah. You know, like this, his body adapted, evolved to be able to play like this. Dun, 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 Like that's so freaking cool. It I love so, humans. I, I love humans too. My friend Cam Haynes, he does a bunch of ultra marathons. No, stop it. I hate and, that guy. Uh, I love that guy. Yeah. He's, he's an awesome dude. Yeah. And he started out, like, uh, it's funny when I, I talked to him, like, so when I started running, I was like, I could barely run a mile. And that's, so someone was saying, like, how the fuck does someone run 240 miles? I go, well, you start by running a mile. Yeah. And how you do you just, start eating an elephant? Yeah. You start and you just, you keep, and then next thing you know, you can run three miles and yeah. you can do it at a comfortable pace. And then... Six months later, you can run six miles at a comfortable pace. And then six months after that, you can run a marathon at a comfortable pace. And then six months after that, you can run an ultra marathon. You, you, you got to keep... You said six months, though. Like, people want immediate yeah, know, early gratification, yeah, right? Like, yeah. how can I just hit a button or I just watch an app or pull up a YouTube video and, and teach me how to do that? Yeah. Because it takes work. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing. So yeah. how do you convince somebody to do it? Because the... Yeah. This idea, this constitutional republic that we're in, like it was possible because the individuals were strong, self-sufficient, and they believed in individual responsibility, right? And they had fucking balls. Yeah. To come Big, to another continent. huge, powerful, I mean, they'd, I'm going to fight a bear? Like, you know, like, Start I, a, a republic. Start a whole new thing yeah, that's on another possible continent. No. Without that individual being... A freaking stud. Yeah. Right? And not this f f fat, flagellant, gelatin human sitting on the couch playing video games. And th there, n none of these ideas are possible if we continue down the, the soft trajectory of wanting instant gratification and believing that we're entitled to anything. We have, yeah. we have to believe that you got to be a badass for this to work. There's so many people that are conditioned to instant gratification, and there's so many people that just want to take a pill. That's 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 another problem yeah. with today. You know, you feel bad. Do you feel bad? Well, you need to take a pill. Or or go run four miles. Yeah. And do what your brain does. The same freaking thing that your pill just made you do, but it happened naturally. And you'll be healthier. And you're gonna produce more of it tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I don't know a lot of really depressed, frustrated, sad healthy smart people who exercise a lot yeah yeah no it's not i mean i'm sure there's some i'm sure there are absolutely some mental imbalances just like some people have liver disease right yeah. and they don't even drink some people they, they get cancer and they didn't do anything wrong because the body fucks up sometimes that also happens with your brain it happens with hormones it happens with uh, the your brain your brain's ability to pro produce dopamine and serotonin sometimes it just doesn't work right no yeah. and that is a, that is a, a, a real thing but more often than not, that's not what's going on. Nope, just go do the work. Just go do the work. Yeah, it feels so good. And everything, like, how much do you love eating your elk? I love it. It's, not only does it taste fantastic, right? Not only um, do you look at it and remember, every time I'm cooking, whether, like, I had lasagna the other night. I took some in the elk made Italian sausage, um, a little bit of pork fat, a bunch of Italian, um, mm. you know, oregano and thyme that were mi mixed into the meat. Uh, so I made a lasagna with ground backstrap and Italian sausage two nights ago. But the like as I'm cooking and I'm remembering walking up this mountain and seeing it two ridges away and being like, okay, where's the wind coming from? How am I, am I going to button hook around this thing so that I, you know, I can stay up wind of it and uh, catch it in this next ravine, you know, and like every single moment and the smells and it's all coming back to you. And then I sit down at the table, I got my family with me and we're going to eat this together. 
it's, it's amazing. It's like magical. It's hard for people to understand that have never done it before, but it is uh, eating something that you have hunted and killed yourself is a different thing. Huh. It's a different thing. It really is. Yeah, so fun though. In Texas, boy, what a good place to do it. You can fucking do it anywhere here. Yeah. There's so many ranches here. It's crazy. So much land. There's not a lot of public land, no. so it's going to be a little bit different. Only 2%. Yeah. Which is the whole state, which is kind of bonkers. Yeah, but, but I mean, is the government is. really supposed to be owning our land? Whoa, you just got all Texas on me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, well, listen, I'm, I'm not opposed to owning property. Yeah. Uh, and you can pay to hunt all these places. And most of these places are, um, a lot of them, I should say, are commercial hunting ranches. And they're not unreasonable. And you can go and for a small amount of money, when you think about the amount of animal that you get. Yeah. I mean, if you hundreds of pounds, yeah, I and mean, especially pigs. Like you get some wild. First of all, wild pigs. You've eaten wild pigs. They're, yeah, I fucking love them. I think they're goddamn delicious. <sighs> I love them. You gotta get the right one. You gotta cut the right way. Well, I've got I got lucky, and uh, the ones that I've hunted have been at Tahoe Ranch mm -hmm. in uh, California, and they eat a lot of acorns. Oh wow! And they were real thick with fat. <sighs> oh my god, they're yeah. so good. I shot one with John Dudley, and we we brined it and slow cooked it on the Traeger. It was incredible. I love the Traeger. Oh, love it. So, so easy, easy to cook. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. I had this walk-in, I mean, it's half the size of the studio, this walk-in smoker. And it had the eating ele heating element and um, the smoke element and had it kind of like insulated. It was um, like I could hang an entire rack of elk ribs in there. But I had to sit there 24-7 for however long I was going to sit there and, and smoke this. And uh, it, it. Oh, just... Yeah. And, too much of a pain. Adjusting right? smoke levels yeah. and heat levels, and yeah. and then it's like, oh, now I can just put this thing in my and walk inside with my phone. It's gonna check your text app. me, <laughs> hey, add <laughs> add some more stuff in here. Yeah, I need more smoke. And you're like, oh my god, this well, is too easy. Even better, I love when you do a recipe through the app. The app actually navigates the cooking cycle mm -hmm. and changes temperature for you. Yeah. But then at the end of the day, it's really just fire and wood. That's the beautiful thing. There's no chemicals. There's yeah. no gas. There's It's just fire and wood. Yeah. And so it tastes like you cooked it over an open fire. <sighs> so good. It's fucking awesome. And wild game that way is the best. Yeah. It's the best. I mean, there's a reason why so many uh, hunters buy Traegers. Pell pellet grills, any pellet grill. If you don't have a Traeger, pellet grills are the shit. They're so good. Like, I love how easy it makes life. You know, like my, uh, my outdoor cook kitchen's next to the pool. So I go throw that stuff in there, and I'm like in the pool with the yep. kids. Yep, mine too. Know, and it's just, yeah, I'm not sitting over there wasting my whole entire day, and my kids are pissed. You know, yeah. I'm like, you better appreciate this brisket, you know, because I spent 14 hours on it. You know, like that never happens. Like I put that in there, and I, I forgot about it. I appreciate old school. Like when I watch uh, the videos of Franklin's Franklin's barbecue <sighs> yeah. in, in Austin, that that dude he uses old school, you know, offset smokers with yeah. wood and throws the wood in with the logs, and obviously the result is fucking insanely delicious. Yeah. I appreciate it. But I don't have time for that, bro. That's his full time job. <laughs> yes. You know, Aaron Franklin, I got it. Yeah, That's amazing. You awesome. keep doing that thing. I'll drive in and buy it when yeah, I need it, but yeah. I don't have the time to do that. I don't have the time. And I love looking at my app. Like, oh, the, the meat's at 120 degrees. Yeah. Get ready to pull it. Yeah, yeah. we're getting close. And yeah. it sends you in the little notification. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it. I love it. And I, I can't get enough wild game. And I need to bring more out here. I didn't bring enough out here. I have, uh, I have it in commercial freezers, some of it back home. So I literally might take a trip back home just to fill up some coolers and bring meat back. That's crazy. <laughs> um, sh shipping it with dry ice. Well, if, all you have to do is put it in a Yeti. Yeah. Well, if it's I, frozen, it'll you could p send it regular ground mail for five days. And it'll get there fucking frozen. That's, that's cool. It's crazy how well those things keep temperature. I, I put on um, either end a little cardboard vertical separator from the meat and then I pack dry ice in there mm. and I just leave like an inch along the top if I'm shipping stuff. Um, and then it just keeps it, you know, super frozen. For how long? How long will it last? I mean, the dry ice, it, you know, evaporates at the same weather regardless of temperature. So inside there, that'll last four, five days. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it could be done. Yeah, yeah, you could ship it. What are you guys doing tomorrow? 9-11. Well, the reason why I had you on here today is because this podcast is going to be released on 9-11. I think there's no more appropriate person to have on 9-11 than you. We have a podcast uh, tomorrow that we're doing, a Skype one with a fellow from the UK. The uh, th There are way more appropriate people than me, um, like any firefighter that was there at Ground Zero. Have you you've been to Ground Zero? No. Man, you got to go. Every American 
I think New York City is off my list for life now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's a good point. Uh, but being there and seeing I'm kidding, by the way, if you live in New York, relax. I'm coming back. Um, oh, they do a ton of comedy there. Yeah, they're still doing comedy there. You have to do it outside though, in a fucking tent. Yeah, but don't people come by with microphones and scream at you? Yeah, that that's happen- comedy too. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'd uh, John Hackleman and I talked this week. Um, he called me. He's like, "Hey, what would you do if?" You're at a restaurant and, you know, you're essentially ambushed by people screaming at you, trying, you know, telling you to raise your fist, to raise your to fist. Yeah. Um, and like, you know, one, I'll, I'll not be there because I, before I go places, I'm making sure that it's safer to, to go there. You know, I'm not going to be sitting at a restaurant where a protest is going to be walking through. Um, and I know they're targeting ones specifically to try to catch people and get the, I gotcha moment. Uh, two is like, you know, situational awareness. It's not, I'm, I'm sitting here and I see some people congregating across the street. I'm going to wait and see what happens. Now there's a lot of people. I see cameras. I see megaphones. I'm going to still sit, sit here and wait and see what happens. I got to see like five, six people wearing black hoodies, masks, you know, with little red fists painted on their shoulders. I'm like, hey, dinner's done. We're out of here. And yeah. we pack up and go. Um, yeah, so New York, crazy, crazy place. But that, that memorial is I don't know what it is about that place. Like you can feel, I don't know, souls. Like you can feel the pain there. I think that's real. I think you can. My dad went to Gettysburg and uh, my stepfather and he was there and he said, uh, I've never believed that there's a place where you could feel sadness. He goes, but it, it, you just feel the, the, the people that died there. Yeah. You feel it. I mean, it, I mean, palatable, describable heaviness. Yeah. And this is not like I'm not like I'm not a guy that you know like there's crystals no yeah. but like you can f- feel it and you know, like th- never forget right how quickly we forgot. Um, well, they were trying to cancel the fucking putting up the the lights. Yeah, yeah. Like why? Why would you do that? Have you seen the Falling Man documentary? No. So there's a photograph called the Falling Man um, that it is. Now you can just Google Falling Man and you see. This guy, and this, this is anytime I need to know the reason why I'm going all over these places doing oh, that's it's it. that dude. Oh, fuck, I can't look at it because it, like, I mean, it gets me. Because, like, let's talk about this dude for a second. Um, he's sitting, standing, um, kneeling, laying on the floor of a shattered window, and he's looking back inside, and he's making the decision whether he's going to burn alive or he's going to jump to his death. Him and hundreds others. They're sitting there, Americans, looking inside of a building, being like, okay, do I burn alive or do I jump to my death? And that 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 video and that picture is so unnerving because he consciously is making the choice to die the whole entire way down. You can see he's staying in like, I'm going to face plant into the asphalt and all the way into the ground, he's making that choice because he didn't want to burn alive. So like every time I'm uh, sucking or suffering or, or fr- frustrated, if I have to go, you know, do a- another mission that I'm, of course, I want to do all these sexy things all over the planet. And, but sometimes like I don't get to get, uh, usually that's the way the military works. Don't get to pick. And, um, I think about that guy and I think about the 3000 Americans that were standing there and ha- be faced with that choice of, am I going to burn alive or am I going to jump to my death? Because insurgents wanting to you know, radical fundamentals wanted to destroy the idea that we stood for capitalism, American freedom, uh, you know, with $500,000 and box cutters, these untrained assholes were able to bring down the largest superpower on the planet. Like that's what asymmetrical warfare is. Like asymmetrical is, is something that's not aligned with everything else and warfare in these, um, under asymmetrical warfare is kind of the haves not fighting the haves and doing it in ways that nobody's ever done it before. It was, it was genius and horrible that this small group of untrained guys with box cutters did what, how many trillions of dollars have we spent in this war? $17 billion in damage just in that one day, 3000 American lives, more lives since Pearl Harbor. You know, like we went to war with the Japanese and dropped two atomic bombs for that. Uh, we are so short with what we remember, 
this this current society, this generation, this fast influx of information. Like I'm, I I want to never forget that man's face. And do we know who he was? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. They think they're like ninety percent. Um, there was another couple that did it as well. Oh no, there right? there there was like a, a few dozen. Yeah, they got the black girl on the right. Or, or maybe she's white and covered in soot. But she's literally looking down, Jeez. trying to get a breath, a, a, a fresh breath of air before she either suffocates or burns alive. And then she jumps. Like, never again. We say never forget. And you know, never again. Like, how do we stop that? And that is the constant unrelenting fight against these fanatic ideas. And it's not just, there are countless types of, of revolutionaries and insurgents, uh, like ones that do it for religious reasons, ones to push out foreign powers, um, ones because of you know, the, the, the um, Hutu and Tutsi, like that's just ethnic. Um, but they're all the same kind of formula of we're not happy about something, so we're going to do something horrific to try and change asymmetrical warfare to try to change the shape of something and uh that fight against this these extreme outliers has to be one that we're committed to all the time otherwise that will happen again right it might be a train it might be a bus you know it might be a dirty bomb you know like thank god boston probably the next worst thing that's happened since then which was a couple of idiots with pressure cookers because we have been so aggressive, not just here, but also abroad, ensuring that this doesn't happen. It's weird right now, you know, I think the last time I was here, I was telling you how bad it is in special operations and special forces, specifically in recruiting. Like we are hurting for people and the right people. And all the people that have been coming in, they came in to fight this war. But now we have kids in basic training that weren't alive when 9-11 happened. I volunteered on 9-11 because of this, but now we have, I don't even know how many, I'm calling them kids, they're heroes, that they're, they're selflessly serving their country. Um, but we're leaving Iraq, we're leaving Afghanistan. I, I, I had a deployment next year that looks like it's going to get kanked because Trump is pulling back our forces from these places for us to do other things. And those other things are counterinsurgency. It's foreign internal defense, it's security forces assistance, it's joint combined exercises for training. And like, while I want to go put on my body armor and have a beard and go look sexy and go do all these things, those are the important jobs that we have to do in the coming, in the coming years to make sure this doesn't happen again, right? If we were in Afghanistan in 1999 with a presence trying to help the Afghani government have a constitutional republic or a government in, in a way, would have this happened? Maybe not. I, I don't know, but probably not. It's the same reason why we're all over Africa. It's the same reason why we still have presence in NATO. It's the same reason that we're, we're present in the Philippines. It's, it's trying to fight these radical ideas so that security and stability provides an area for people to live freely. However they want to. We're not telling anybody how to live, right? Philippines, Africa, Niger, Nigeria, um, Mortania, Burkina Faso, you guys do your things. Whatever that thing is, we're here to help you do it. But it's going to be done safely to provide st stability and security. So I, I never want to see that again. Like, do you want to see an American be like, I'm not going to see my kids, but I want to burn alive. So I'm going to jump. Fuck you and your extremist ideas. I'm going to find you. And we're going to fight you till the day we die. But we have to be vigilant about it. When you hear people talk about defunding the military... When you hear people talk about pulling troops out of other countries and a non-interventionalist foreign policy, but you know what you know, yep. and you know why this stuff has to be done, how, how do you react to that? It's ignorance. I mean, it, first it's pity. It's like, I, I, I feel bad for them. You know, I'll go to a country in West Africa, and I'll go back two years later, and I will see the school that I helped build or was providing training for the people that are going to be protecting it. Um, and that school is still functioning and they've had 
two years of people graduating from that school. And now I go to a, what was like this podunk village and people are sitting there reading a book. I'm like, you can read? Like, yeah, I learned how to read last year. What? This is so cool. You know, like you have fresh water. How did you have fresh water? Like, ah, well, we learned um, how to read. And then we started reading these books and like we actually do natural filtration through the soil. And and we're also doing this tiered irrigation. Like check out our crops. Like, holy crap, you have crops here. You didn't have crops here two years ago. Like in in two years, in two years, I'm seeing this transformation of, of people. So every single radical group, from ISIS, Al Qaeda, Taliban, um, FARC to Antifa, they go and target the poor and the uneducated. That's that's who they recruit from, and they they take these ideas, they plant seeds, and they plant seeds through, um, like you're super poor, your daughter's going to get married. I'm going to come in as the bad guy, as the ISIS member, and I'm going to pay for your daughter's wedding. And, um, and the endowment, I'm, I'm gonna do it all. And now like, you're indebted to me and your wife and her new husband are kind of like appreciative to me, but now I have a hook in you and I can, and it doesn't take a lot of money to pay for a wedding in Somalia. So the, there's the population, there's the poverty, and there's the opportunity for them to plant these seeds of fanatic ridiculousness. And that's, that's what they do. So when I see somebody that's like, Hey, we need to pull everybody back. Yeah. In, in, in wars, Iraq and Afghanistan, we, we, we have created stability there and I don't know, well, we can never govern Afghanistan. Like they can't be, that's just the way that the people are. And it's kind of cool. And it's kind of, uh, also frightening because they're so nomadic. Because yeah. It's a bunch of, I mean, it's been tribes. tribal forever. I mean, yeah. you go back to Genghis Khan, you know, and like they've been insurgents from Khan to, to the British, to the Russians, to then the British again, to the French, to then the Russians again, then to us. Um, like they've just been doing this thing for as long as they've been in existence. So, uh, just leave them be. Right, we can still be there with the government, like hand in hand, advise, and assist, and accompany, like how to do things. But we don't physically need to be there fighting wars all the time. Um, and that's kind of what we're doing, right? We're phasing back our physical direct action presence. But it's somebody saying that we need to pull everybody in. We only need to protect our own borders, and let's just be present here. It's super naive and it's super ignorant um, because this is the result of us not being outside of our own borders yeah, the idea of policing the world doesn't sit well with people though for, we don't have to police the idea really. the world and that's not what we're doing so security forces assistance or, or joint combined exercise for training or foreign internal defense that is i am not walking around being like hey you insurgent you get back in that building um i'm with like by with and through working with the local government by their side with them with their mission and their intent through their own purpose and ideas. I understand that. But how do you get that message to people that do think that it's policing the world, that do think that we should mind our own business and take that Ron Paul approach and pull the troops back and take care of our own and not worry about other countries? I mean, I, I wish I could take people with me to show them. Um, Have you ever listened to Ron Paul talk about these yeah, things? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh I think the the easy answer, and I never like easy answers, is that this hasn't nine eleven hasn't happened again. Even though they have, we know that they have tried ten, twenty, thirty thousand times. They've tried to do this again in every single way, and whether it's a terrorist um, training camp where we got them, whether it's the new ISIS leader, whether it's the new Al Qaeda leader, whether it's the next Ar Iranian, um, you know, secret service that's funding groups and terrorist organizations all over the planet. Uh, we got him, you know, like we have been constant and vigilant in, in finding them and stopping them. And we have to, otherwise, like how is, how, how has this not happened again? Are there fewer extremists? No, we have stopped them through our actions. If we did not do anything, this would happen again. How much of an effect does it have in who's president? <sighs> oh man, a lot.
Like, what was the difference between Obama and Trump? Um, I'm, I'll just use ammo as an example. A, a, a soup, like again, not an easy. I'm just trying to draw, you know, parallels that people can wrap their heads around. Um, if I'm going to forecast how much ammo I need for training, I'm going to find out what my mission is. I'm going to set up kind of like the training calendar of all of the events that we're going to do, flat ranges, CQB, long distance sniper stuff, mounted training, and then that forecasts how much ammo I need. And then I go and I ask for that ammo. And um, I would get like, I'd be allowed to ask for about a third then during Obama of what I was allowed to ask for with Bush or now Trump. A third. A third. Wow. Yeah. And was there a rationalization for that? It's just like a funding. Um, like us being able to buy cool drones or new guns or different optics. Like the funding is there or the funding is not there. And if um, like while the big Department of Defense military machine uh, may not be the most efficient thing, when it goes down to the individual, like it comes down to me being like, I can have this gun or I can't. I can have this optic or I can't. I have to use this old rifle that's been shot by 20 soldiers before me or I get a new one. And um, and it's, it's, it's black and white. It's like dollars and cents. Like I have $9 under this guy or I have $3 under this guy. So when you left fighting and mm -hmm. went back into the military, was one of the reasons you did that because Trump was in office and then there was more funding? Yes. Um, I don't like losing at anything uh, and going into a fight that you are not prepared to win is a pretty bad idea. Um, and knowing, you know, like I'll use Kel Kelvin Gesslem as, as an example. I was supposed to fight Rashad Evans at New Year's Eve um, or at Madison Square Gardens in November and fight fell through medical things. And I, I mean, by the time I get to the Kelvin Gesslem, I've cut my, I've cut weight two different times. Now my ballooned up to 220, back down to 185, 220. Now I'm cutting weight back to 185 again. And now a, a five month fight camp. I'm like walking out to the octagon tired. Like I just warmed up in the back with Brandon and Greg. And I'm like, that's a Over really trained. Yeah. But it's a bad feeling to walk into a fight not in a position to fight. And we're, when, when Trump was elected, we were 100% still at war. ISIS was thriving, right? All the places that I went and fought in Afghanistan were now controlled by ISIS. Like, do you know how bad that sucks to look at all the places where I remember friends getting hurt or, you know, like Jocko, the places that he went, like those were occupied by ISIS, physically occupied. And he lost countless friends, Fallujah, Ramadi, Sadr City, all of those places, all of the Syrian border controlled by ISIS, land that we controlled and fought and then lost. And then thinking about like, I have to go back in here and do this again, but I have the third, a third amount of the resources to do it. That sucks. Or knowing that, okay, now I'm going to have a guy that is going to back me with the pocketbook to go and win. And that, that was the, the choice for me was I just want to win. I don't want nine 11 to happen again. And that's hard to stop when uh, you're giving, when you're creating vacuums for evil to fill. And how much of an impact has it have, has it had having Trump as president and making those decisions to fund the military better in terms of success overseas? I mean, we smashed ISIS in a year, one year. They rose for three and and started gaining ground, the ISIS caliphate, into all of the Middle East. Like they were popping up. We had ISIS people swearing allegiance to ISIS in Africa. You know, like the Boko Haram was like, yeah, we're ISIS now. Like, what? Are you kidding me? And that cancerous plague spreading all over the world because we weren't aggressively with vigilance fighting those ideas. Then, um, you know, November rolled around 2016 and it was by at February of 2017, it was like, go. And it was off. 
You know, we're literally smashing them at every single opportunity, dropping the biggest bomb, you know, in Taliban, the JDM or the, was it the Mother Moab? Yeah. yeah. But that's pretty cool. I just dropped the, you know, the bomb next to the size of the uh, nuclear weapon. That's, that's awesome. And this is all because of Trump getting into office and funding the military. Yeah. So the president comes out with this, um, national strategic plan. And that goes to a bunch of different things from Department of Defense to Department of State. And every single one of these look to that idea, that document as to how they're going to operate. And then you have the appointees to those positions, like Mattis, for example, where then he interprets what the intent is from like the executive plan. And then for Department of Defense, how are we going to fulfill that? And then that goes to all of the regional commanders and to all the special operations units. And then missions are built off of fulfilling these ideas. And those ideas were smash ISIS, remove radical terrorists off the planet, and provide security and stability with all of our partners. And then grow who our partners are. So like in Africa, if you went back five, six years, you would have three or four, five countries that were part of this, like this group of regional Africans wanting to be free, right? Like they don't want Boko Haram or Al Qaeda or ISIS coming in and and telling them what to do. They want a free constitutional uh, government. So we started helping. Now there's like a dozen of those countries that are part of this group and they're all doing, they're all doing the work. And it's amazing. It's amazing to see what happens in just a couple of years in any one of these countries when they start doing the work. It's no different than a person, right? It's like, but it's a group of people and they're all believing in these ideas of of freedom, um, of education, of prosperity, and we're just creating an opportunity for those to be realized. This is not a message that gets out enough. What you're saying right now about the importance of funding the military, about all the positive aspects of these operations, and about how squashing these fundamentalist terrorist groups can lead to democracy in all these places and can lead to flourishing schools and growth of these individual areas. Yeah. This is not a message that gets out enough. No, I mean, and that's by design a little bit. Um, I, I think, you know, half the country doesn't want the other half to look good. Um, and we definitely know that our, all of our enemies, foreign enemies are 100% participating right now as we move towards November in delegitimizing what this country stands for in the process of our elections and what we're allowed to do successfully overseas. So like, you know, from Russia to China, like they are in the business of hurting America and they're, not only here, like making our election seem uh, unfair or broken, um, but also abroad where they're, they're trying to, like every place that we are, they are as well. And they're trying to do the opposite of, we, of what we, like they're, they're, they want radicals. They want broken. They want, um, because every little bit that they do is more that we have to fight against. Um, when I said that, an insurgency is cheap and a counterinsurgency is expensive, but we're fighting counterinsurgency all over the planet. Um, as we move towards the elections with Portland firing off, Seattle firing off, like I think it would be very naive for us not to think that China and Russia are negatively participating. If you look at 2016 with Hillary and Trump, um, were the Russians involved? Yeah, yeah. For sure, they're they're stoking the fires of hate on both sides, and it didn't matter who won. Like they didn't want Trump to win, they didn't need Hillary to win. They just need the process to look broken. They just have to make us look bad. It doesn't matter to them who wins. And coming to Biden and Trump, it doesn't matter who wins. It matters that they delegitimize the process of a fair election and a constitutional republic. It's really easy to do. Um, I'm going to use, all right, you have a birthday coming up. You are going to turn 60. Happy birthday. You look great for being 60, Joe. And um, you're going to have a party to celebrate this. 
and um, you're going to have all your friends over, you know, you, you got some gay guys, you got some black guys, you got some Mexicans, you, you got, you're, you're a pretty balanced person with lots of different friends from lots of different cultures, not, but they're all going to be in the same room, right? Got this big, huge melting pot of your party. Cool. It's going to be a rad party. You got a bar. Um, you kind of rented this cool place that has a, you know, some few bathrooms, has this nice, nice balcony, uh, this beautiful statue. Um, and there's like this ice sculpture um, that's, that has some great drinks on it and the punch is underneath it. <clears throat> I don't want you to have a good party. I'm, I'm your insurgent. I don't like you. I don't like your ideas. I don't like this idea of everybody being able to co-mingle. So I'm going to go and I'm going to ruin your party. I had a friend of a friend that kind of got me in. So how hard is it for me to ruin your party? Super easy, right? I could go piss in the punch. I could go find that gay guy, use some homophobic slurs. I could find that, that Muslim over in the corner and, um, you know, tell him that like the PLO is the dumbest group on the planet, you know, that Israel should own everything and that, you know, Muslims are ignorant uh, multi-wife assholes. All of it's untrue. It doesn't matter if I believe it. I'm just there to piss people off. I'm going to go to those two bathrooms. I'm going to go give you an upper decker. I'm going to go poop in the top of two of those toilets. Ooh, that's disgusting, right? It stinks. Maybe I'm going to go chip away at the that little beautiful sculpture. So when somebody goes to scoop the, their first punch, the whole thing topple, topples over. So easy and so cheap for me to ruin everything about your day. That's what they're trying to do with an election, right? They're just trying to erode the process and ruin it. And it costs them nothing to go and piss off every single group, the far right, the far left. They just want people angry. And the process is so simple now with Twitter and Instagram and Facebook, right? These set up these, these massive um, bots that can go and like things and create, and they play this long game where they just start planting seeds of distrust and, and they are spending money to make Antifa mad. They're spending money to make the Boogaloo bros look mad. And they want everybody to be mad at everybody moving into November. So then the process, the election is jacked. But your party, so you do have an option. This is the catch-22 of how difficult it is as a leader to stop it. Like I could hire security guards. I could put a guard at the front. I could put a guard by the punch. I could put a guard in every bathroom. I could check all the IDs of everybody coming in. I could have like a exact list of people that are allowed to attend. Um, but now I just ruined you, just ruined your own party because you're trying to provide security and stability and you put all of that in there. And But now your party sucks, right? Like I can't get a drink. I'm only allowed one drink and um, nobody's allowed to talk to each other and nobody's allowed to hang out. Everybody has to be segregated and separate. So you ruined your own party. So in either case, you give me freedom of movement the American way and I'm going to ruin it. Or you try to come in too heavy handed and then you look like a dictator. You, you know, you, you'll, you'll look like Hitler himself. So how do you, how, how do you have a good party? It's hard. That's where we're at right now. They're literally doing that with, with every way they can. It's frightening. So this idea that Russia just wants Trump to win, it's horseshit. Yeah, they don't care. They just need the process to look bad. So wait, we, we have a constitutional republic, right? What do they have? A what, dictatorship, basically. Yeah, absolutely. So they don't need a friend. They just need the process, the idea of America to look broken. That's what that's success to them. If I like I can say this with such absolute like conviction because this is what we do. This is what we do. This is what we go overseas and do. Like we have specific groups that are doing this exact thing to make them look bad, but they're doing it to us. And because America is so free, it's so much easier to do here. Like how hard is it for me to go to Russia and, or land in China and go and start planting seeds of discontent? It's pretty freaking hard, right? Like here it's not. Mm. So hard to fight this. So because of the fact that we have freedom and because of the fact that we have these democratic elections, because of the fact that we have uh, the ability to express ourselves and communicate freely online, mm -hmm. which they don't really have in either one of those countries, I mean, there's severe repercussions for criticizing the government in China. Yeah. Severe. And same thing about Russia. 
So because we have this freedom over here, they participate. Yeah. And the way they participate is through the Internet Research Agency. And I had a woman on uh, named Renee Derestas who extensively researched this and was talking about how spectacular this operation was and what they would do. They literally organized a pro-Texas meetup across the street from a pro-Muslim meetup. And they set it up. They set it up that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a friend who's um, uh, uh, very well-versed online found this uh, Antifa uh, rage, uh, this uh, thing against white rage online, and they they trace the IP back to Russia. Yeah, and they're like, "This is wild. This is wild shit." Like, they're it's doing not this. wild though. It like, is America. Wo did. Yeah, right. America. Wake up your eyes because it, or, or, wake up and open your eyes to this is happening. Where how naive is it for us not to think that our enemies are trying to negatively affect what is happening here? Right, because this is the place where you can negatively affect mm -hmm. it in the way that they can do it here, which is different than the way you could affect anything in Russia or China yeah. because of the fact that we have this freedom of expression. Yeah, they don't, they don't need somebody to win. They just have to make us look bad. This is where our media has failed us because our media takes this horrible partisan position, whether you're on the left or the right. They, they only want to look at the things that show that the left or the right, depending on who your enemy is, is fucking up and how China or Russia, whoever whoever you deem the, the player that's the key player, is influencing our elections because they want this person to win. So if you yeah. love America, you will vote against Trump because yeah. the Russians want Trump to win. This is this is the fucking narrative that keeps getting spit out at yeah. us. And it's not a, it doesn't sit well with me. Yeah. And I'm glad you're explaining it the way you're explaining it. Because partisanship and this this abil inability to look at things objectively is really fucking us up. Yeah, it's really bad. And these motherfuckers that are running the media, there's a reason why people aren't paying attention anymore. There's a reason. Yeah. There's a reason why those those sources are not trusted. I mean, d divided is perfectly divided. Like if 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 I if I were in China or in Moscow. I was like, exactly what kind of environment do I want so I could negatively affect an election? You're looking at it, right? Yeah. I'm going to stoke the fires of the 1% on the right. I'm going to stoke the fires of the 1% on the left. And I'm just going to, I want them so angry. I've created all these different accounts that have thousands of followers. They're fake. The followers are bots. And the people that are saying that those are real people that speak perfect English and they are in there in those groups just planting hate. So the people who just get madder and madder and madder. <clears throat> you know, we look at like Black Lives Matter. I don't think there's a single American that that's going to be like, no, Black Lives don't matter. Well, I mean, there, there might be one, but screw that racist, right? So few and so irrelevant. It's such a minor position. Yeah. And like, yeah. A, like the, is there solidarity? For sure. Like, are the solutions, the things being talked about? Not really. Not really. Why is that? Like, I'm spending probably half of my waking hours right now developing a way to be able to train police officers and get something into every single police department so they can like, you know, unconscious bias, um, training about how to deescalate, understanding different cultures, right? If I'm walking down the street and I see a key, Sikh and I'm like, oh, is this a Muslim? I've got to go here and fight this guy. And the guy comes in a little bit close because that's part of their culture and it's also part of their culture that they have a knife. And, um, but I don't know any of this and I just, misunderstood who this person is and his religion and his ethnicity. And now I have this super bad interaction because this guy stepped into my space and all could, that could have been trained out. I could have taught somebody those things. And with everybody being so stoked on getting angry and finding out the problems, nobody's talking about solutions. Like how do we, how do we, if there's a problem in law enforcement and there is like, how do we fix that? Can we talk about that instead of, of trying to find the the next poor Uber driver that gets lost and immediately calling him a racist or, or finding the next Antifa guy that um, is really just poor, lost his job, has been living in his mom's basement and just needs something to do. Yeah. And let's give them something to do and that's like make a positive impact. That is a real part of what's going on too. Yeah. It's a real part of what's going on is people don't feel like they belong. And when there's a movement going on, if you jump on that, you you see any of that guy who uh, shot the uh, pro-Trump supporter in Portland? Yeah. And you see the interview with him afterwards? Yeah. The interview is classic. You listen to him interviewed him. He's a lost guy. 
a oh. lost, weird, social outcast who found a home and then is soaking up all this attention that he got for shooting a Trump supporter that he's claiming was out there trying to kill a friend of his of color. Yeah. Like this is his description of it. And then the police show up yeah. and he tries to shoot them. Yeah. He's just a lost person. Yeah. A violent lost person. Yeah. I mean, somebody with, a lot, with no purpose right. is a dangerous thing. Especially um, one who doesn't understand the consequences of their actions. Yeah. And s- my my brother's a sheriff, um, Nick in uh, in California, and um, the things that he has to do in a day, you know, the number of people and interactions that he has to have and that he has had in his career, and every single time, um, is it going to be this Antifa guy that just shot somebody? Um, in, in Monterey, there there was actually some Antifa guys that had thrown some pipe bombs in Oakland and then drove into um, northern Monterey County and um, set off some more pipe bombs, shot a couple more cops. And this kind of got buried in the news. Uh, but like my brother was one of the guys that showed up there. And they have to deal with that, like a radical domestic terrorist. And they also have to show up when a husband and wife are having a dispute. Um, they have to walk up to every single car as if that person is going to kill them. That person might be a DUI. That person may not want to, if they have broken the law, um, not want to get out of the car. Like, you're going to make them get out of the car? Like, it is the, the hardest job in the world. They're undertrained, they're underfunded. And, but they are the necessary security for us to prosper and be successful. And my brother is the most selfless, incredible person, as, as most of the guys, and I train with a ton of law enforcement. And nobody, they're not perfect. N- nobody is, no human is. Um, but you can, you can't train perfection, but you can train bad out of people. And uh, that's one of the many reasons why I think training is so paramount and, you know, to the election and people are always focusing on, on the bad, like you gotta find solutions. If you're, if you're mad and you believe in black lives matter, what is your solution? All right. If you're, if you think the cops have a problem, I'm trying to find, like, I've found a solution, right? We're, we're creating this, this uh, virtual reality headset that we're going to be able to put into every single police department where they'll be able to listen to um, and interact with different ethnicities that, that are consistent with the populations that they work in, the, um, you know, like, be able to identify unconscious bias. Like, I, I'm pretty aware of the biases that I have because I look through the lens of my life through pretty jaded glasses, right? The things that I've gone and done and seen. Um, but there's no way that I'm aware of all of them, but w- there are ways that you can train that out of people and that you can show them and explore. Uh, we have like some of the best, brightest minds, PhDs, um, law enforcement trainers that are designing these things that we can like put um, specular theories, my partner in this, like we can take these things and send them to every single law, def- law enforcement department and train people about how to interact. And when you're a hammer and everything looks like a nail and you're going to all of these different interactions with like, is this guy going to shoot me? It's hard because he might, but he also might just be having a bad day and you need to know how to deescalate that. And, um, but you also have to be able to enforce the law. And that's one of the hardest things right now. And I know the Chinese and the Russians are loving the fact that we are questioning, do laws really matter? Can we just let things go? Mm. Can we just tear down statues? Can you just walk out into the middle of an interstate and stop traffic because you believe you have the right to do that? No, you you can't do that. Like the re- rule of law is there not just for you, but it's for us. And if you believe in the collective, then you have to believe that those laws are there for our good. And we have to make sure we elect good guys that put in good laws. But like if you just don't believe that it matters and you can go and you can riot and you can loot and it's just property. Like you can burn that building down. It's just property. Lives are more important than property, but there are people's lives that are attached to that property. It might be how they make their money. It might be where they live. Like watching Antifa throw those Molotov cocktails while there were kids sleeping upstairs in the apartment building, like shame on you. You're being played right now. Not only that, but what you said earlier, if you do destroy that property, understand the lives that are going to be affected because that community is going to be entrenched in poverty for generations. Yeah. You're not doing good. You're harming. 
stop harming, you know, yeah. <laughs> start doing good. Find, find yeah, like as, as we're on nine 11 of uh, the time, maybe the last time that we were united as a country where we're like, no, never again. Like w- we can do that now. We really can. I, I believe in the American spirit, but like they, this petty, immature, hate that people have against other people like they're not other people they're other americans that believe in the same thing as you and that want the same thing as you they might have a different way of going about it and getting there uh, per, and perspective but like we're, we all bleed red you know we all believe in the same thing we all want the same thing and just finding out how to get there i wonder what can be done to decouple us from the influence of social media in terms of like there's no way you could stop as of right now. There's no way you could stop trolls. There's no way you can stop things like the Internet Research Agency in Russia or all these different online groups that are just c- completely created just to fuck with people. Yeah. There's no way we could stop that now. Nope. If we could, we'd be better for it. Yes, we'd be better for it. If we would figure out what is actually happening. If we could clearly identify the source of all these different things and let people know. But people wouldn't even believe it right now. People are so jaded right now. If you said, hey, this is a Russian troll, people are like, no, it's not. No, you it's just not. work for Trump. Yeah. I know what's going on here. You're not going to trick me. My my buddy Shane and I were talking about gaslighting this morning. Mm-hmm. And um, he flew, he and his buddies flew um, their helicopters over the Trump parade that um, just happened here in Austin. Like thousands of boats went out there. And um, like a, a few boats sunk and they're like, one guy rented a boat and he forgot to put a plug in there. And, um, one of them was like a really crappy fishing boat that shouldn't have even been on the water. And then one guy bought a brand new boat, didn't even know how to operate it. And poor guy sunk his boat, but Shane's like flying around and he sees everything, you know, and they're, they're Robinson's 44. They're like doing these cool V flights. And, um, you know, gaslighting is telling somebody something that's not true. They're seeing it with their eyes, but they're hearing that it's not real. Right. The the original play Gaslight was this guy making his wife be crazy. He would he would adjust the he would be able to adjust the the wick on his gaslight so it would get darker in there. And she'd be like, is, is it darker in here? He's like, No, it's this what's wrong with you? Are you crazy? What what's so we're in a time where people are telling us what we're supposed to be seeing, but that's not what we're seeing. So I'm like, oh, I have this conflict. I'm like, am I, am I supposed to believe what, what I'm seeing right here? But we're being gaslit by the wrong information that's being curated in our hands, in our phones, and on our, and, and on our TVs. So the Lake Travis thing, in reality, there's hundreds of boats. Thousands. Thousands of boats that are supporting Trump. Three sunk. But the narrative you're hearing in the media. It was like this catastrophe. Catastrophe. Yeah, I wasn't there. I, yeah. I, I was working. But yeah. like. My best friend is flying around in helicopters, and he sees the whole entire. He has videos of everybody. Um, people are crazy on boats sometimes, mm-hmm. but um, you know he he literally sees the whole entire lake from a bird's eye view, and he has photos of the the boats the boats the few that got were being towed in, and he's like, man, those were the crappiest. <laughs> you know, like I don't even know how those things were on the water, but there was just people that wanted to participate, and um, but what is this huge half the boat sunk there's 20 underwater you know there's this this disaster of an event Shane's like Man, I saw thousands of boats with you know titties being shown and people dancing and trump flags and am i being gaslit you know he's asking this like that this is the definition of it is it what is you see it is amazing that the narrative was the three failures <sighs> but if we take that as the micro and blow that up to the macro of that happens in absolutely everything, the shooting here in Austin, right? We have what happened and then we have what we're told right? on both sides. You know, like the, the, like I don't even, I don't think you could take the final version of these two stories and be like, this is the same, the same situation. Like there's no possible way that these two stories that went to the right and went to the left that I'm now trying to corroborate could could it could have happened in the same situation like that's how far the lies or the partial truths go mm. so how, i don't know how do you fix that 
I think the only way to fix that is some kind of technology that allows you to accurately read exactly what's going on. That doesn't exist right now. There, there, there might be something on the horizon that they're like some neural link type deal where they're working on the ability to bypass this. The, the, like right now, the connection between human beings and information is you read it or you see it, but you don't really know what it is. Yeah. You know, you're reading it, you're seeing it, right, and you get right. confirmation. You're not reading it, see, it's going from the person that is getting it mm -hmm. to a thing, and then that thing is controlling what the next group sees. Yes, yes. And that's a huge problem. Yes. Like, I don't want my information curated. I just want information. Right. And let me, as a rational, rational, reasonable person, be able to figure out. That is the, pr the problem, right? The problem is you can't trust whoever, there's not, there's not an unbiased source. Is not a, an unbiased, un and and every source is also a corporation. They're all connected to the machine in oh. some really deep and and crazy way. The tentacles run deep, every, whether it's CNN or Fox News or o -N -O -A -N or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah, whatever news source, uh, MSNBC, CBS, ABC, NBC, they're all giant corporations. They all have huge political investments. And they're gonna give you some some super distorted version of what's actually. There's no one. There's not one person who will sit down. There's not. There's no Walter Cronkite no. on television. There's a few that are online. You can get a bunch online, and that's one of the reasons why online news journalism is flourishing, and so many people are turning to these people that are online. Yeah. But they're also flawed because they're they're human and they have their yeah, own biases for sure. Yeah. Um, Andy No, I follow him on Twitter. He's um, yeah, he's been on the podcast. He has, yeah, P pretty 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 uh, passionate guy now. I guess he was assaulted by Antifa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hit him with like some cement milkshake or something. Yeah, um, and maybe the worst mistake they made because they ignited what was just kind of an independent journalist. Um, now he's like, nope, I'm mad at Antifa. You guys like beat me up. You damaged my brain, mm -hmm. and um, you know, but. His journalism on Antifa, albeit trying to be as accurate as possible, we know he has bias because he doesn't like them. Yeah. Because like, they hit him in the head, you mm -hmm. know, and they beat him and they, they threw cement milkshakes at him. So like even, even somebody that has um, trying to do the right thing, it's imperfect because with that person comes bias. Like how do we just get information? Yeah. Um, again, I, I really think that we're so limited because of the distribution methods that we have right now for getting out information allow for biases. Yeah. You know, and I, I don't I don't know what the future has in store, but I think that we're going to come to a time in the not so distant future where you're going to be able to know exactly what's real and what's not real. Yeah. I hope so. It's so cool. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of resistance against it too. <sighs> and we're going to find out a lot of people are full of shit. Yeah. How cool would that be if you know like we have the fact checker, which is like the biggest bullshit ever mm -hmm. as a politician's talking it's like fact check and the person fact checking is the most bias furthest thing from object objective fact yeah. check that you could possibly get and it's like but you're checking the facts what if at as that person was talking real time like this is true here's like this the, the truth's not wikipedia statistics not mm -hmm. like google also curated statistics not like information driven from whatever news corporation right. but just like the real data was next to that person as they're doing the next debate if a debate happens that'd be cool i don't think it's gonna happen you don't think it's gonna happen no how can you not have a debate biden's not gonna do it i don't think he can I don't think he can stand there for that long and and last. I don't even know what his ideas are. <laughs> yeah. Like, but that's the point of the debate, yeah. right? Is is for me to learn about somebody's platform. Well, you know, at this point, he's doing well by not talking. That's not when doing he talks, well. It hurts him. No, I just, I don't I don't imagine. I would never allow him. If I was in the DNC, I'd be like, "There's no way you're debating. Trump's going to destroy him." But that doesn't matter because the ideas are the thing that we're voting on. But it doesn't matter because people want to see who can hang in a debate and they don't want to vote for a loser. So if the guy gets up there and falls apart in the debate and starts stumbling his words yeah. and starts flubbing and forgetting what he was talking about, like Biden's done on multiple occasions, a lot of people are not going to vote Man, for I him. I swear I thought they have a scheduled debate in a couple of weeks. It's not going to happen. Don't I, tell me I that. You, I bet you 100 bucks doesn't that, that, happen. 
that's usually where I learn about somebody. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're not trying to learn. They're trying to win. I don't know about, especially like, I love it when local politicians do debates because those are like no hold barred truth attacks you know like Mm -hmm. well i know you took money from this auto park place you know and like this guy's like well i know you're getting money from you know beto o'rourke and you're like this is awesome (laughs) you know like i'm learning so much right now that there's no way i would have learned and they do and uh so i mean we kind of have an idea about trump's policies but how do we learn about biden's policies yeah i don't know i think they just i think biden at this point just wants to win i think the best way they think to win is to keep him from talking too much if I really had a guess, like the He's, only th- Kamala Harris is on doing a lot of inter- different interviews and talking. What are you laughing at? There's, I'm trying to look up to see what the new information about debates is, and this is the story I found. Trump spurns traditional debate prep with first face-off less than three days, three weeks away. So what is he saying? We're supposed to. There's supposed to be one in about three weeks. But there we right. There we go. He's not held a uh, single mock debate, and he said he doesn't need to. Just President Trump has not held a single mock debate session, has no plans to stage a formal practice round as he readies for his first face-off with Joe Biden in less than three weeks, according to multiple people familiar with the discussions. The president has dismissed the typical debate preparations he participated in four years ago, joking to <sighs> aides and allies that he's been pe- preparing for debate since he was born. This is, this is what happens to fighters when they get their ass kicked. His ability to fight back an opponent in real time, he's argued, isn't something you have to practice. That's, yeah... Maybe. Instead, Trump has so far chosen to prepare through informal discussions with key allies and with briefings from top officials in his administration on various topics that will likely come up, like or that are likely to come up, these people said. Can, can you? Would you do a debate? Would I? Yeah. If, if like, another problem I have with... If I had to do a debate? No, no, not, not you debating somebody. Um, oh, I'd prepare like a mother. I know you would. You'd be fun to watch. But... um you be the control mechanism to the candidates like a Biden Trump debate with Joe Rogan hosting Mm. your questions. I would want that. First of all, I'd want no one else in the room. I I just, just the the three of us cameras. So we, we can record with the truth. Yeah. Just the three of us. And you would have to stream it live. So no one can edit it. And I would want them in there for hours. Ideas we get to hear yeah. what they actually believe in, yeah. what they're going to do, who they're going to appoint, yeah. what judges are going to be coming in, what policies from gun control to yes. all of it. Yes. Can't, why, why can't we well, have that? We should have that. This is 2020. I mean, we have the ability to have that. This is, this, we're not talking about 1979. <laughs> we're talking about 2020. If they wanted to do that, they both wanted to come here in Austin, sit down and have a debate. I would 100% do it. My God. I would 100% do it. It'd be amazing. It would be the best way to find out, but I don't think that Biden can handle it. I, I think Biden is like, I think he's, I mean, people get mad at me for saying this. I think there's something wrong. And I don't think there's something wrong because I'm guessing or because I'm pro Trump. I've seen him fall apart. I think yeah. I've seen him start talking. Not, he's had multiple brain surgeries. Yeah. This, this, this is him saying, I sent you that thing yesterday, right? Play, look at this. This is something, I mean, I'm not trying to be biased in any way, yeah. shape, or form. I'm a Bernie Sanders supporter. Yeah. I, right? I just I'm, want a I'm commander a in chief that will supporter. let me be, like, yeah. do a commander in chief. I like Tulsi. Yeah, I love Give me Tulsi. a Tulsi Jocko. 100%. That, that'd be a fun. Jocko, run for president. Just the beginning of it. Just the beginning of it. He starts talking about his brain surgery. The only uncharted person, totally uncharted portion of the universe is the brain. You know, I had, uh, as we used to say in the Senate, excuse the point of personal privilege here. I, uh, I had two cranial aneurysms. And they literally had to take the top of my head off. I mean, they take a saw and they cut your head off and, and go in to find the artery that is, one was leaking, the other that hadn't before it burst. There's this, those of your docs know there's a every, every every procession every profession has their sick jokes. The joke among among docs is how do you know someone's had an aneur- cranial aneurysm on the autopsy table? Uh. Only 20 percent of the people have it even get to the table. Well, one of the fascinating things is that the second operation after the first one, which there was a bleed, and they gave me a relatively low chance of surviving. Mm-hmm. I remember going down to Doc, asking the Doc, and we, you know, you're counting the ceiling tiles, and you're heading into the operating room. And you, a lot of you've been there. 
And uh, I said, Doc, what, what are my chances? I had two great neurosurgeons. And I'll never forget, I will not mention his name, he's one of the leading neurosurgeons in the, in the, in the world. Um, he said, uh, Senator, for mortality or morbidity? And I'm thinking, <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. Okay. We're, We're good. good. We're good. <sighs> now, this is not a knock on this guy. I'm happy he's alive. But that this is what we're talking about. We're talking about someone who, these are legit issues. This is not. He's going to be sitting in a briefing room when a bunch of people from the Pentagon walk in and say, we have found the number one terrorist on the planet. What do you want us to do? And that guy has to make a choice. And this is, by the way, when he was vice president. This is this is quite a while ago, yeah. this, this film. So like. <sighs> okay. Oof. The. Keeping something, in, the only thing that comes from isolation is a Unabomber. Like, th there's nothing good that you can take a candidate and stick him in a basement and hide him there when he is going to have to be in front of 7 billion people and be their representative and both foreign and domestic about how we're going to be operating. And if that, that's, that scares me. It's weird. It's, I know there's other people that could run for president. I just don't understand why they chose him and why they work so hard to make sure that he's the guy. Yeah. It's, uh, it's weird that the Democrats chose that. Do and you think I, we're going to have, regardless of, of who wins, do you think we're going to have a fair election? I hope so. I don't know. I'm not informed enough to make a, a, you know, a statement. Do you think here we are in September? We have September, October. And then we have the election. Yeah, it's pretty quick. Super quick. November um, 3rd is around the corner. I argue that right now people are trying to negatively affect our election. For sure. And we kind of have to be aware of that. So the next time that you pick up your phone and you're like, do you want to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fry this guy, you know, at white privilege Twitter handle, I'm going gonna, I'm yeah. gonna to get you. Yeah. Like, that person just wants you to do exactly what you're doing, which is be mad. There's a, prob a high probability that there's a lot of that going on and that it's, it's just feeding the flames of hate. Yeah, and it's even worse because we've had this stupid pandemic that has locked people into the echo chamber of their own ideas. And you could also say it's worse them. by the way Trump behaves and the way he communicates. Yeah. And th this this uh, polarizing way that got him famous, you know, you're fired and fuck you and get out of here and all, all this this way that he's become famous it doesn't suit someone to be the commander in chief so all these yeah. people that say that he's not presidential he's not he doesn't act like a statesman he, they're right they are right he, yeah. this is not what you would want from a person who's the leader you'd want someone who's exemplary you'd want someone who's speaking in a way that we, would make you proud like that is an american president yeah and the way the speaking part I mean, that is what we got from barack obama what we got from him is You're so presidential amazingly yeah. presidential as presidential as anybody who's ever been i would argue more so than anybody ever yeah. even than clinton Clinton, when he was at his best, I think he was really good. I think Obama was better. Yeah. But well spoken, articulate, yes, patient, everything. Yes, you know. the measured. You know, it, it, it made you feel good that a guy smarter than you was the president. You don't feel like that with Trump. You're like, Jesus Christ, don't say that. Ah, <laughs> oh, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Get out of here. It's like I'm not a like I'm not a supporter of Trump. What I'm seeing, what I'm seeing though, is that if you're not, if 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 you don't ignore all the things that are going on with Biden, somehow or another, you're a bad person. Yeah. And that, that to me, as a person who's a comedian, as a person who hates fundamentalism, as a person who hates rabid ideology, that's driving me crazy. Yeah. Because this shit is all right in front of you. You're watching him stumble through his words constantly left and right. We're ignoring the fact that he's 77 years old. We're ignoring all these signs that show, I'm not saying that you should vote for Trump. What I'm saying is how the fuck are the Democrats running with this? How is this in 2020? This is what we're doing? Yeah. This is this is what we're doing? <laughs> and even the choice of Tulsi Gabbard, like, I mean, uh, of, of, uh, of locking Tulsi Gabbard out, rather, the choice of uh, eliminating her. The whole thing sat with me. It's so, it's so gross. Uh, the way they did it, the way they pushed her out, the way they would, wouldn't even let her speak at the DNC. It's wrong. And, you know, and it was almost like the, she got canceled by her own party. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly what it's like. And it, it, that's that's evil. 
right? Yes. Like we, we have a, a smart veteran. Two, two terms, or six terms rather, six years as a congresswoman, uh, two, two overseas tours, yeah. two. Been a congresswoman for six fucking years, exemplary record, really reasonable, really intelligent, displays all of the things you would, all the qualities of leadership that you would want from someone yeah. running for president. But let's dox her. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. What assholes. The whole thing was crazy. The whole thing was crazy. And and then, and then his choice to choose, like he literally said, I'm going to choose a woman as a running mate. Yeah. Well, how about choose the best person? Yeah. If that best person happens to be a woman, that's great. But if you tell me you're going to specifically eliminate males... Well, well, you're you're thinking in terms of identity politics. Yeah. Is this the same Joe Biden that's been a, in politics for fifty fucking years? Yeah. All of a sudden, you're you're an ideologue who is going with identity politics over the best person for the job. Yeah, absolutely, clearly, clearly. That's this is crazy talk, Kamala. So the parties defund the police, right? Like that's a a, a left progressive idea. She is literally the police. She's a cop. <laughs> She's, yeah, and and not like. If, if we're going to solidarity to Black Lives Matter and believe that we can positively affect change, what she was doing as a cop, she's the worst of the cops. She was targeting in the most racist, vicious way, trying to attack black communities and, and black, you know, not, not even criminals, like drug, de um, drug users and just hammered them with everything she possibly could. And... But now she's our vice president. Not only that, she withheld evidence that would show that people were innocent, yeah. withheld it from defense attorneys. She kept people incarcerated to use them as cheap labor to fight fire when they were supposed to be released. Yeah. What, do, what do we have to do to get a Tulsi Jocko or a rock? You, you like the rock, right? I love the rock. Yeah. He would be like a Tulsi Rock or like a <laughs> Tulsi Chaco. They, they could literally win. They could literally win. And I would be 100% in support of that. It's just we're dealing with this machine, man. And this machine wants to st stay in control. Yeah. And who is going to be a good player for the machine? Who's going who's gonna to do the right thing? Who's going to do the bidding? I mean, this is how they got Bernie Sanders out. Both they, times. They, they weaseled him out. And he still, he bends the knee to them every time. What? I don't know why he's a good guy. I don't know. Doesn't want conflict. I don't know. Yeah, he's a very reasonable guy. When I, I have met a him. ton of respect for him, um, while I disagree with a lot of his positions and politics, I, I disagree with a bunch of Tulsi's on on um, foreign policy about how to do that. But that would be a conversation she and I can. Yes, have. well, I would love to have you have that conversation because the way you explain it and from your own personal experience serving. This is not just some fucking I can pull out, you airy see, I, fairy ideas. I, I go everywhere with these things. Um, like I journal kind of like I take little weird notes um, and you could go and they're all dated from trips to Iraq to Afghanistan to Niger to Nigeria to Burkina Faso to Mauritania to um, Morocco to South Africa, like every freaking crazy place that I have to go. And you could look and then like go forward two years, three years and, and look again and be like, what? Look at this change. Mm. Like it's just black and white written in front right. of you. And my impressions of physically being there at the same place removed by 24 months. And that has happened time and time again. Well, that's why I wanted to have you want to talk about this. Because uh, this is a narrative that doesn't get discussed. Because it's either you're pro-Trump or you're pro-Biden. And if you're tr for Trump, you're a racist. And if you're for Biden, you're a fool. Like this, It's like these narratives are so goddamn stupid. And they're so damaging to us. And I think a lot of them have been reinforced and stoked the flames have been stoked by people in other countries yeah. that are that are acting as trolls i think that's a lot of what's going on yeah. there's a fucking great video see if you can find well, it the cat what you got uh, something else yeah yeah as you guys were talking i found something i didn't want to interrupt with but to oh. support what we were talking about uh New as New our veins day. were popping yeah. both joe and i were like, <laughs> rah, rah, rah. russian chinese and iranian hackers all targeting 2020 election microsoft says so they yeah. put out a blog today and they detail what's been going on with these companies but does this su like surprise anyone doing. no okay, so if they're doing what are they this doing? what else are they doing in real time so right. they're not just online no. if you don't think that there are um, we call them Jedbergs. If you don't think that there are foreign operatives that are working here, both at universities and in cities, part of the political process or part of the Antifa strate strategic organization, they are doing this in real time in person, yeah, not just crazy. online. This is craziest. We've observed. 
Yeah. Strontium operating from Russia has attacked more than 200 organizations, including political campaigns, advocacy groups, parties, and political consultants. Zirconium operating in China has attacked high-profile individuals associated with the election, including people associated with the Joe Biden for President campaign and the prominent leaders in the international affairs community. Phosphorus operating from Iran has continued to attack the personal accounts of people associated with Donald J. Trump for president campaign. Yeah, they're they're fucking with us. But look, yeah, is it one side or the other? No, they're no. all over the place. Trump, Biden, the parties, yeah. the consultants. The, the The point is, they have to delegit delegitimize the process, right. and and the only way that, and the best way to do it is just to make it look bad and to make us fight and to make us argue. And like the, the fact that there's people walking down the street being like, I hate cops. You guys are evil. Like, do you know any, or did you just read right. what ha, you've just been reading? What has been echoed? Like my friend, Matt's son who called the cops when the fucking, the house was making noise. Yeah. That's, that's, that's who these people are. <laughs> hey, the, the vi there's a video of a crow fucking with these two cats. It's one of my favorite videos. There's a crow, uh -huh. and there's these two cats that are looking at each other from opposing rooftops. And they're like, Row! looking at each other. And the crow gets over and gets near the cat and starts fucking with him. The cat's like, get out of here. Watch this. So here's the cat, and there's the crow. And the crow flies over and starts fucking with these cats and gets these cats to duke it out. He's, he literally instigates this fight. Look, he flies over. Like a fucking bird is coming near a cat. Why would he do that? He's doing it because he wants to fuck with him. So he gets him a little agitated, and then he flies back and gets him a little agitated, just fucks with him just a little bit. I'm going to tease you. I'm gonna and then he flies things. over to the other cat, and he goes back and forth and fucks with... Look at it. He goes behind him and fucks with him. He's irritating him. Crows are fucking smart, man. And this little cunt just starts p pestering these cats. <laughs> And gets these cat. Look at him. He's pecking at his ass. He's literally looks, and the oh, cat's like, and "Fuck fight. you!" Oh, yeah, fight. And Everybody then fight. The cat reacts by jumping over and fucking attacking the other cat. They go off the <laughs> and edge. They fall off a roof. Boom! And the crow follows him. This fucking crow is a monster. <laughs> that crow is all the online trolls. Yeah. These are Biden and Trump supporters engaged in moral, mortal combat here. Look at the crow. Look, they go down the fucking hole where the basement is, and the crow's like, rap, rap, fucking losers, fight, losers, fight, rap. fight, you're black, you're white, fight. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That video is amazing. That's it, right there. I fucking love that video, because <sighs> that video is exactly what's going on right now. <laughs> they were just looking at each other. Yeah. The cats were just looking at each other. They probably would have gone the rest of the day without fighting. Yeah, just that crow, lapping some milk, chasing a mouse, yeah. you know, but no. That they got cunt their... of a crow. Started Got all that fired shit. up. And that, that, that crow is Russia and China and Iran and every other country that hates us. And then those two nice, peaceful cats fell off a roof fighting. <laughs> they still but that's what we're yeah. doing. Exactly. We're like literally pushing exactly. each other off cliffs. There's another one. Crows do it constantly. <laughs> Look at him. Look at him. Just walking up to that cat and fucking with him. They like watching fights. Uh, Look at him. He's like, yeah, yeah get after it, boys. It. Get after it. Get top. Get top. Come on. How funny is that? That crows like to do so that. So awesome. They do it on purpose, those little oh. twats. It's kind of amazing. It is kind of amazing. I mean, I cut props to the crow for figuring yeah. that out. But I guess crows are just like people. We all like watching fights. Yeah. And uh, and looking at Americans, it's pretty easy to know how to piss us off now. Right? Yes. Like right every now. single one of these little hot button topics yeah. pop up. Yeah. There's somebody over there like, oh, I'm going to push that button. Then a new po button pops up like, oh, I'm going to push that button. How many buttons can we have right now? Because we're getting so pissed off at everything. Yeah, no we're all button. We're, we're all, all button. button. Yeah, we're full, there, full of buttons. Go outside. Go exercise. Yeah, go do something. Go do. You know, go, go have sex. Yeah, please. You know, if you, if you want to make a change, yeah. like don't throw a Molotov cocktail. Go find a police officer and talk to him for a little bit. Or go find, uh, go to Baltimore and talk to the black community there and figure out how you can help. You know, like, has anyone gone and figured out what, how they can help one of these communities? No. Because they don't care. No, that's that's not that doesn't get you uh, Instagram likes. And <sighs> the other thing that's going on too that I, I I the timing of the fucking pandemic is so crazily perfect. I'm not a conspiracy theorist in the sense like I don't I don't believe in nonsense. Like there's just too much nonsense going on. But God, if I was, I would be looking at this. I'm like this is this is so perfectly organized. And then the response yeah. like keep people from working. Keep people from working. So what? So that they're broke and scared and yep. angry, and then they're even more subject to this shit. And now, as we're what five months removed, we're, we're having that same conversation about schools. Well, schools is a necessary component for people to work. Like if your kids aren't in school, 
you can't go to work because that's a form of childcare for a lot of households. Yes. And we're like, ah, oh, it's uh, not sure it's safe. Man, I, you, I was joking about injecting myself with COVID in my neck. Like you could take my breastfed babies that eat elk and free range chickens and have lived in safety and security their entire lives. And you could like cover the whole entire room with COVID. And my 10 month old is going to poop that stuff out in like an hour, you know, cause they're healthy, balanced, powerful individuals. My teenage daughters, like we have not lived a day in this whole entire pandemic really recognizing what we're supposed to be doing. We have maintained health outside activities, exercise, hunting, real food. Um, and like, so, so better situated and prepared now for what looks, looks like a scary six months in the future. I'm scared because this entire country, 6 billion people have been locked up moving into an election that is going to be a frightening dangerous election yeah and, so it's there's no winners in this election but it's whoever I, wins whoever wins it's going to be chaos so you on think the other side. when you say i'm not a conspiracy theorist but here we are with a pandemic that shut down our economy for five months um on an election year that looks like it was the origin is in china um what are your theories i just think that first of all the i Talking to Brett Weinstein about it, who's a biologist, and he went into great. If you you're listening to this podcast, please go back and listen to the most recent podcast I did with Brett, which was like what four months ago, Jamie, three months ago, maybe, something along those lines. Yeah, maybe maybe even two months ago. He detailed the the scientific reasons why he believes this came from a lab, and there is a and 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 it's and he said. I do not know for certain, but with with reasonable speculation, you could look at this and say this makes a lot of sense that it was come from lab because of these particular reasons. Yeah, that lab was cited in 2018 for safety violations. This is, I mean, China because because it's a communist country, right? Because they're a dictatorship. There's not a lot of incentive to behave the way you would hope that uh, a, an organization would behave yeah. like you're you're under the knife of in the boot of the government all the time that people don't do the best work when they're scared like that no and that lab was and there's cited. no incentive no incentive yeah yeah you, yeah, you, you no have matter to how do. much you work fear is your only incentive yeah, yeah. You, you don't get anything more for working harder right. or better right you just don't get killed so 2018, they were cited for safety violations. This is exactly the same area where they're doing this work on coronaviruses from bats, and this is exactly where the or, the origin of the disease was. It doesn't take a rocket scientist no. to figure out that it came from there. They don't think that it came on purpose, though. They think it was a, just a sloppy leak from the lab. Yeah. Sometimes things happen where they're just perfectly aligned, and then people take advantage of those opportunities. Yeah. They take advantage of these situations. Like there's a lot of people that believe that 9-11 was an inside job. What I think is when they found, when 9-11 happened, I think there was many people that took advantage of the chaos. And there was things that were passed, like the Patriot Act. Oh, they're the, getting fired up on yeah, that. Sweep, Let's reference that constitution again. Yeah, so it's <sighs> sweeping. Uh, I talked to Snowden recently. These sweeping, just overall surveillance of law-abiding citizens that are doing nothing wrong and they lied about it they lied yeah. about it. they all lied about it they lied about it to congress they lied about it to our face obama lied about it everybody lied about it they knew what the fuck they were doing they took advantage of the fact that people were scared and they started yeah. just just going into everybody's shit single most intrusive moment in american history in our freedoms not being encroached on not like a little trickle of you know cut by a thousand or death by a thousand cuts like 9-11 happened, we lost and gave up so much of our perceived um, rights, right? Like, no, you can't look at my emails. Like, I thought my emails were protected like my mail. You can't open my mail without a warrant. There's a due process to that. That's gone, right? Like, I think every single 20-year-old right now expects that every text message that they send and every Facebook message, DM, Instagram, Twitch, um, every one of those things can be read by somebody else, that they don't own that stuff. 
that's not how I grew up. I grew up like that was my ideas. Those are my words. Those That's my property. If somebody wants it, they have to have a warrant to look at it. Now, go from 9-11 to Corona. Now, the second most serious time that we lost more of our freedoms, 9-11 and this. Winston Churchill said, never waste a good crisis. Yes. And you want to know when a government is going to overreach? It's in crisis. Yes. And if you are not a strong, healthy individual that is able to be self-sufficient and be able to rationally look at things without getting spun up by the echo chamber that you're living in in Twitter, like you're going to allow that to happen because you're just being pitted against each other by this dribble that's being pushed into your face by people that are just trying to profiteer off of what you see and what you th- hear and what you think. That's exactly what I think is happening right now. That's exactly what I think is happening. I think there's people that are taking advantage of this crisis. So I think the way to fight that is as a society to unify, to reasonably, collectively be like, no, you said they can't, you know, we, they canceled Halloween. Yeah. They can't cancel Halloween. It's fucking crazy. No, they can't. The only way that they can is you allowing it to happen. Yeah. Right? They can't shut down your salon. They can't tell you you can't go door to door and trick or treat. Right. They can't. They cannot. They you, can't do that. They can try. And the only way that they can't do it is if you go and do it. But the fact is there's no uniformity because they're allowing people to protest. So you're allowing people to protest. About some things. About some things. Black Lives Matter. That's it. Yep. Allowed. Yeah. You, you but can't. But counter COVID protest. Right. You can't do that. Uh, evidently you will down. get COVID. Los Angeles backtracks on coronavirus trick or treat ban this Halloween. Good, you fucks. They should drown there you, you all. The fact that you even considered it. Dunk you all in toilets. <sighs> yeah. Back. Look at that. We did. We did it in an hour. Yeah, we changed California. Well, everybody freaked out. Now I bet, get... bet thirty thousand people moved out of California the day they At read least. that. Well, my, my wife got a text from one of her friends. She's like, "Fuck this. I'm out of here." Yeah. And she sent her the the news on on California banning. Trick or treat. That yeah. was her. That was her thing. Now, pedophilia alone would be another reason to leave. You know, I got. I'd be out of California pretty. Is fast. there a lot of pedophilia in California? Uh, yeah. Well, here's another. You thing. have legislation that's kind of being passed to. Oh, the, what is that? You put that on your Instagram. Is it? Is that real? Yeah, like, it's real. Is that a hundred percent legit? That's real. And legit. So that is that really mean that a twenty year old can have sex with a ten year old? Ten year because it's a ten year difference. So. But isn't statutory rape anybody who's under 18? Yeah. So, it, no, it's lessening the penalty for it. So, let's say a, and uh, the the trans community, um, LGBTQ community was in big support of this bill because it's not fair for male to female. Um, so, if, let's say, a 17-year-old has sex with a 15-year-old and she gets, or I'm sorry, a 19-year-old has sex with a 15-year-old and she gets pregnant. There is a law in place where um, the pen- he is not going to go on the sex registry because he, as a father to that child, would have a difficult time being able to, if he's on a sex registry, get a job, pay for child support. So they have kind of protections in place where if That's he- only in California? Yeah. But hmm. if he had um, orally or anally had sex with her, then- the law would be the penalty would be more severe severe he would be on the um sex uh, offender list. offender list because he's not trying to yeah. procreate so Whoa. the the community like the lgbtq community was like this is an unfair law because um you know if it's a a gay relationship they have a harsher penalty than a um male and female relationship so they should be the same if, while I recognize that and I acknowledge that that's the case and I, I want it to be fair, but I also don't want a 19 year or 24 year old having sex with a 15 year old. Yeah. No, I don't no. care where it is. No, that's crazy. There's a reason. 18 is 18. I mean, there's a, it's a good number. It's not. It should be later. <laughs> How old do you think it should be? Well, I mean, to have sex, I guess 18, but like, um, I was a disaster at 18. Well, I was too, but if I could I vote was, at 18. But if I was 18 and a 23 year old woman wanted to fuck me, I don't think she should go uh, to jail. No. I was ready. Yeah. I mean, 18 year olds are ready. Like, the problem is our perceptions of, of sex. I mean, I'm talking about someone who's a grown adult. Yeah. I feel like 18 is at least pretty close to a grown, grown adult. Yeah. 
maybe you know voting we should extend to 21 where drinking is yeah it might not be the worst idea in the world but as far as like being responsible for your actions 18 yeah. is a good number yeah 18 is where and that was the point of my post is that that person can have consent yes like the the way that it's written written was somebody willfully having anal or oral sex right um i'm saying anybody under 18 if you can't like you're not willful you're not allowed to be willful right because you're you don't too, have the right to have consent yet right you're too young too young you're not an adult no yeah, that's a fucked up law. And then we don't want to get into the the crazy <sighs> sex trafficking of. Well, I saw the picture of the guy who made the bill too, dressed with a, like a fucking dog collar on. Yeah, he's a weirdo. I I'm like yo, don't, don't make any laws, especially around <laughs> sex. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's but I just don't understand how it passed. It didn't. It didn't. It's on, I mean, it has to be signed. How the fuck is no, that? No, it just has to be signed by Newsom. It's so yeah, passed legislation hasn't been. Signed. Yeah, it's that's it's right. it's that's, passed. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like it's you just need a wet ink signature. Uh, Jesus Christ, that seems so insane that a twenty year old can fuck a ten year old. Yeah, like a twenty year old can have a ten year old boyfriend and decide that it's consent. A twenty year old yeah. man can have a ten year old boyfriend, and uh, as long as it's within the ten year boundary, you're so, okay. Like, again, I realize unconscious bias. I have a pretty jaded view of things. And when it comes to like children, um, you know, heavily involved in counter sex trafficking, um, you know, moving from Deliver Fund to Guardian Group um, to now with Victor Marx, uh, you know, fighting worldwide and, and, and nationally, like the, this disgusting thing that is pedophilia. Like, that is yeah. not a sexual orientation and people in power like finding children to victimize and they are worth money. But there's a thing now where people are trying to portray it as a sexual inclination, as a sexual proclivity. Like there, there, there's a TEDx talk about, have you seen that? Yeah. Where this woman is talking about how we have to have compassion for pedophilia the same way we have compassion for homosexuals or trans people. And it's like, what are you talking about? Well, I mean, I, I have compassion for the person but I'm not going to have compassion for any of their actions. And if they need help, um, we can get them help, like put them in an institution and they can realign whatever their problems are. But well, like also, being I, attracted to a child yeah. is a, is period, wrong, end of story. I don't care Agreed. what you think. Agreed. A hundred percent. But here's the thing. How does that woman know? Like th this is the thing about pedophilia. Like someone who's not a pedophile, to say that this person is a pedophile can't help themselves. How do you know? Like, what do you what are you basing this on? Are you basing? You're not basing it on your own personal feelings. Like, I know I am attracted to women. It's I know it yeah. uh, because it's it's and I know there's a lot of people like me, right? And so if I talk to another guy and he goes, uh, "That girl's hot," I go, "Yeah, she is hot." I get yeah. it. I see what you see. But if if you're talking about someone who's attracted to children, that's so fucking alien to me. So if you're telling me that someone can't help themselves because this is a natural sexual inclination, like how do you know that? Yeah. I don't I don't know that that's true. And I don't know what the fuck you do to save them or to fix them. I don't know, but I think the primary concern is protecting, protecting children. Child. Yeah. Primary. Yeah. More than like like having compassion so, for pedophiles. You, you know, protection, we have to put action to that word. What does yes. protection look like? The, that is law, that is yes. legislation, that is people that are being able to stand, not not allow evil to happen, right? right? For evil to, to conquer, it just takes good men doing nothing, standing back and being like, yeah, I mean, I, I guess they could recognize and align themselves with being attracted. To, no, 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 not yeah. a chance. The idea and if you is do that, something and you touch a child, I'm going yeah. to tell you that's yeah. going to end. Yeah, not good. Nope. Yeah, and it shouldn't. And that's how everybody feels. Yeah. Everybody who has children, and specifically, fuck. It's just the, the fact that that actually can get all the way through to the governor's office is bonkers. Yeah. Well, like, who knows what he's going to do? If he you know, lick his <laughs> finger, find out which way the wind's yeah. blowing. How how progressive am I going to be here? You know, I'm I'm all I'm all about getting reelected, and his chances of reelecting now are fucking slim to none. Thank God. They hate him now. Yeah. Oh, my God. He was the darling of California. Beautiful man, slick back hair, looking my, great, speaks well. My, they uh, fucking hate him there now. My brother, sis, so my sister lives in, in um, Paso, and her husband, who I call my brother, um, because we've been best, best friends for kid, since kids, uh, he works for a nuclear power plant, Chad. And um, so he's, he's pretty like 
military go getter, hard worker. You know, my sister's a homeschooler. She's homeschooled all their kids, and they're brilliant. Like play multiple instruments, um, like you know, grades ahead of everybody else. And while the whole entire world is like, what are we going to do about education? My sister's like, well, individual responsibility. You could have been doing it yourself. Not everybody has that opportunity. I, I understand. My 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 parents with being landowners, my brother being a police officer. Like we have been in California for you know that's where I grew up, and we have been fighting for rational, reasonable politics in that in that, and we we feel like we're in a foreign land. Yeah, you know, you ask how I came to Texas is like, I was a coward. I just couldn't. When I said I wanted to be in a fight that I that I had a chance of winning. Yeah. Like maybe now for the first time, California has a has a hope, a chance of like changing the course of where they've been the so trajectory. Much damage has been done though. You can do an you can undo it. Yeah. I love Dan Crenshaw's man. If he he said that if every law that's written, we have to unwrite another law. You know, um, mm-hmm. it's a hard thing to do to take legislation that's already been approved and passed and then remove it. That's a right. harder thing than getting a new law. Right. So now we have like this crazy amount of laws, both local, state, federal, and they just keep stacking on top of each other. Mm-hmm. And they're not, none of them are good, or most of them aren't. I love Dan Crenshaw. There's, that's another guy who should run for president. Yeah. It, it, we just, I just think California, I mean, there was an article that was written about me being a coward from leaving. I'm like, yeah, yeah, totally. You should stay and fight. I'm like, fuck you. Fuck you, and fuck you for a bunch of reasons. Yeah. We could start with you not letting people go back to work. I think that's unconstitutional and insane, yeah. and I think that's so short-sighted, and people are furious. And then when you see Nancy Pelosi go to a fucking hair salon without a mask, you're like, <laughs> oh, I see how you yeah. people really are. Yeah. You can also never listen to anyone that is telling you to lose a gun when they're protected by private security. A hundred percent. You saw that with the mayor of Chicago. Yeah. She's all for protest until they came to her block, yeah. and then she's like, get the protest off my block i have a right to protect myself yeah. what the fuck are you talking about that's what everybody's you, you saying hypocrite. yes you hypocrite yeah it's just and this is what happens when people get into power this is uh, my problem they're and, and, protected entitled yes, position exactly surrounded by people with guns exactly and they're telling other people us you can't go to salons you can't you can't get your hair done you can't go and have a gun um, but I'm going to sit here in, in my high tower because I know what's best for you. I just, like, I don't know what the solution is. I've thought the solution- Yeah, vote I've, them out. Yeah, vote them out. But even then, I think there's a problem with one person running things. I mean, I really think there's a problem with a mayor or a governor. I think there should be a committee. I think there should be a group of people. Well, there, there, There is, right? You have your city council. So here in Austin, we have a, a dumb mayor. And that mayor has a bunch of city council people that are also dumb. That are also dumb and do yeah. dumb things. Like defund the police. Yeah. But thank By God the governor. 300 million. Yeah. Well, 150. 150? Yeah. The governor stepped in and said, okay, well, if you do that, you don't get any property taxes. That's so genius. He's brilliant. Yeah. It's a br- brilliant move by the governor. And if safety becomes so uh, such a concern here, he will roll in state police to. Um, Keep make up piece. yeah the good. difference good thank you and texas thank dps God. you're going to learn a little bit yeah. about them they're amazing department of public safety for texas it's it's our state police force they're they're incredible they have this super military academy and i think people when they hear military like as i was talking about that virtual reality um training that we're going to get to law enforcement um they're like wait why is this special forces guy training law enforcement like they don't need a police officer doesn't need to be special forces no, you don't need a tank or an AT4 or, you know, a, a 50 cal unless you're fighting the cartels. But what you do need is the process of the refiner's fire and being able to train imperfections out of people. Like, could you imagine if a city council member had to ride along with the police for a month? That's a great idea. They had to go on the calls with them. Domestic disputes, pullovers for DUIs. Not sit in the car. They got to get out and walk up to that car. They got to put their hand on the back of the car, put their fingerprint on there. Because if they die, they want a little bit of evidence. You know, police officers do that. Every time they walk up to a car, if you watch them, they go and they'll like put their thumb or their hand on the back of the car so their print is on the car. So if they get killed there, later you can find out who, who did it. Mm. Isn't that crazy how sad that is? It is sad. But 
as that police officer is walking up there, hello, sir, you know, you're going 85 and a 65. And I smell alcohol. I'm going to have to ask you to get out of the car. We're going to do a sobriety check here on the side of the road, which is dangerous. Um, and uh, over here is a city council member that was just recently elected. And um, they're going to be observing this. Like, how cool is that? It would be a good idea. If uh, you, yeah. It would eliminate a lot of people from that fucking job. Yeah. Yeah. They'd also not, they'd understand. Like you said, how, how do we get this information out? Like if you could do anything to, you know, like Tulsi Gabbard and I are going to debate about f foreign policy. Um, I first have to explain and let them understand what I've seen. And that's a hard thing to do unless somebody sees it and then it changes, you know, th their view. Yeah. <sighs> Fun times, man. What do you think happens in November? Do you think, first of all, do you think that this whole voting by mail thing, which is uh, being hotly contested. It's so odd. I get very nervous when one side's really into it and one side's really not into it. Yeah, I don't like that. That makes me real nervous because I don't know what the fuck is going on. Man, everything that, like if you, if you pull my wallet out, I have a license um, from, the FFA, from the FAA. Like I had to send them a whole bunch of stuff for me to be able to get into a helicopter, right? I have my driver's license. I have my concealed carry permit. I have my security consulting license. I have my DOD ID. Like that's five different IDs that are like, I can't go do anything in any one of those fields without it. A little picture of my face. And and I, I really like that because like I can't access a government computer without that card. I can't go in and sign my, NC, my, um, my annual review, my NCOER without my card. And it's like proof of who I am and what I'm doing. And the thought that they're going to mail out tens of thousands, if not millions of ballots to dead people, to, um, they don't even know who they're just sending them to addresses. Did you see what Kate, what's her name? Kaylee McEnany. How do you say her name? The woman who's the white house press secretary. She, see if you can find this. She said that 117% of the people that are, uh, registered to vote in California there's, there's a, just find the quote because it's, it's kind of crazy. But she was talking about here's the problem. She was arguing for against voter voting online or excuse me, voting by mail. Uh -huh. She's like, this is why. Like what, what is happening here where there's 17 percent more people than are registered to vote that have the opportunity to vote in yeah. California? There, were, there were, um, in 2016. There were, I know I butchered that. No, I know, but I mean, I'm, I had other stuff ready to go for this. Like, I've been paying attention to this. Oh, okay. There, there's like no proof of voter fraud by mail that I've looked up and found that anybody else has been looking up and find. They're just saying that it's going to be a problem without providing evidence. Well, nobody's done it though. Yeah, no one's done it at this scale. Well, I mean, no one's done it like they're going to do it. What they're, what they're saying is they're trying to do all the voting by mail or a giant percentage of it by mail. That's never happened before. The same with the post office problem. They're yeah. like, um, no, we are not going to negatively affect the election. Yeah. We're going to try to do everything that we can. But like the post office is like, I don't know if we can do this right now. Yeah. When someone's saying there's no evidence for voter fraud in the past. Yeah, right. But what percentage of people have voted by mail in the past? It's been reasonably small. Find out that Mitt Kennedy uh, quote, because it's, it's it's a kind of crazy thing. 117% California registered. She she was explaining how he, there's there's multiple issues with this. Like these people that are sending in these mail-in ballots, like how many of these people, how many of these are legit? How do you find out how much, how much research has to be done? Yeah. How much investigation has to be done to make sure that these are legit ballots? Do you see some of the, um, districts in Illinois during the 26 elect 2016 election, there was like 104% came in for yeah. Obama. Yeah. Like that's not right. It's, in, it's, it's yeah. impossible. <laughs> it doesn't, that doesn't <laughs> make sense. It's like, I'm a hundred percent, Committed? Okay, yeah. good. I'm a hundred ten percent committed. That's this is impossible. You can't be. Is, you stop there. You can't be a hundred and ten. I know you want a bigger number, but that, that's yeah. an American thing to want. But <laughs> um, Man, so when I'm trying to look this up for her, all I'm finding are reports saying that she's voted by mail a lot of times. Yeah, it, but that's not where we're asking. I, I know, and I'm looking for the article. You're that's them. So hard to find. So yeah. I'm trying to like hey, find the specific thing. Have you ever find. started no. to type in like a Twitter search? Just write hundred and seventeen percent. Voter by mail. I have, okay. When you type in, like on Twitter, for example, like if you put Trump mm -hmm. in a hashtag, the things that populate underneath that. Oh my God. It's a C. 
Yeah, it's a, a sea of like for a Trump lied, yeah. um, Trump's evil, uh, yeah. Trump the white supremacist. But those are the ones that automatically populate. Yeah. Now, are they? Um, Project Veritas did a funny thing. Um, they were showing where they knew things were trending throughout the world, and here in the United States, at, at the, a crazy hundreds of thousands of retweets through this hashtag, but none of it. We're, we're, we're going to automatically populate mm. in a search under that same thing. It was, well, there's a real problem with that for sure. The the bias on social media is unstoppable. It's not just social media. Yeah. It's information searches. When yes. you're trying, like my, 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 I love my daughter, Julia. Um, and if she was preparing, I think she was 16 or 15. She was preparing for like a, a debate and she was getting information and she was just like Googling the stuff. And I was like, so when, you know, in college, I was, we weren't allowed to do that and citing our sources, like they had to be like very specific and in, in how that process works. And, um, you know, when you do real research, she's like, well, Google's just giving me the information. I was like, no, no, Google's just giving you the information that Google wants you to have. She's like, but I'm just Google. Like she could not compute that the information that she was being given from a search, that it wasn't just a search. Right. And how do, you ex- yeah, how do you yeah. explain to somebody that the information that they're reading isn't all of the real information. It's only a portion. It has to take, it takes a long time before you really digest that. YouTube's another weird one where like kind of uh, hot topic issues mm-hmm. from an opposing idea, those get buried. In well, their... how about all these doctors that were against this idea of the, the, the pandemic and the lockdown? They were saying we need, we need herd immunity, I mean, like real doctors. And I don't agree with them. I'm not saying that they're right, yeah. but I'm saying that like they were all banned. Like some doctors are saying we use hydro- hydroxychloroquine and Z-Packs and I've had amazing success treating patients. Banned. Yeah. Video banned. And the dangerous information. My own doctor, my own doctor said hydroxychloroquine is fantastic if you catch it early. Yeah. He goes, it, it re- really stops the propagation of the disease if you catch it early. But the, a lot of doctors think awesome. that. But it becomes, it becomes political. Brendan Schaub, when he got COVID, you know yeah. what the doctor said to him? He said, I don't know what your political leanings are. But uh, I really believe in hydroxychloroquine. He's like, what the fuck are you saying? My political leanings. Yeah, how does it have anything to do with my health? Exactly. He goes, give me the shit that works. Yeah. I don't want to get sick. <laughs> He's like, I got COVID. And so he got on the hydroxychloroquine. And he was good in three days. <sighs> like you got the, the red pill and the, the blue pill. Yeah. Right? And they're both crazy pills. <laughs> Can I just have what's in the middle? You know, Can I, that, yeah. that, that rational, a reasonable. Pill? Yeah. Give me a purple pill. Yeah, it's this is a weird fucking time for everything. Uh, you don't have to find that, Jamie, if you give uh, up. I'm lo- I mean, I'm so I, I found actually an article from two years ago explaining what how that number it was, was put out there. No, it I, was a video. She's talking about it. I found it in the transcripts, but I'm trying to say that like how they found out that there's 112 percent of the people that are registered to vote. There's an explanation for it. Oh, okay. It's like people move and they don't fix it, like register. Right. Okay. Update their address. So like her um, description of it is, she's making it seem like it's fraud. Uh, it's right. not fraud. It's I mean, just people her that have quote was moved. like, "It doesn't make sense, does it? No, that doesn't make sense." And then she right. just moves on. So it's like mm-hmm. it's not that that's fraud. So she's playing a little game. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's what she just does. Yeah, she's yeah. pretty good at it. There's a whole thing going on today <sighs> that Trump uh, was being interviewed by Bob Woodward for his book. Yes. And back in February, he's downplaying. They're downplaying is the word that's going all over the internet. He's downplaying the yeah the vi- the thing. Yeah. She then said he's not downplaying it when he's on tape saying I'm downplaying it. And now he's coming out saying those words I used on tape are not the words I said. It's like, well, huh? what? But didn't she, she said there was a, also a thing where she was confronted by a press person about that. And she said, read the rest of his quote. The rest of his quote, it wasn't just that, yes, I'm, I'm down, but because I don't want people to be in a panic about this, but I am concerned. Like there was a there was an additional quote. I mean, yeah, he heard the quote. I wasn't even have to read it. I heard the vid. Like you could hear it. Oh, let's play it. You got it. It's not ours to play. Oh, uh, oh, it's Bob Woodward's. It's CNN. Like whoever's putting it out, CNN, Bob Woodward. But it's a post, isn't it the it Trump's? It's Trump's words. It's not marked tape. To put. It just is where we could get into like. Oh, okay. I, I know, get it. I get it. Selling the book right now. Right. Oh, selling the book. Bob well, Woodward. I, I'm just saying. Like it's all. How's that guy still alive? It's all confusing. The Watergate uh, guy. Yeah. Must be taking his vitamins. Yeah. How long is he? How long's he Get got that left? D. How old's that dude? <clears throat> he must be old as fuck, yeah. right? Yeah. He was probably in his forties back in back then. Yeah, seven. Oh, there you there go. You go. So when he's so Biden. he's Biden. No, that's the same age. Okay, he's seventy-eight. <sighs> mm. Crazy. It is a different time though. People are living longer. 
mm-hmm. you know, um, like I know some 77 year olds that you're like, you look Shane, uh, my buddy, his dad, uh, is like, has a six pack. He's pushing 70. Really? <laughs> like jacked. He's out there, um, barefooting on the lake at like 40 miles an hour. You know, he <laughs> skis every single morning and, wow. um, all of his, all of his professional bull rider friends, you know, like, yeah, they, they got gnarled hands from strapping into the bulls for so long, but they're still like chunky shoulders, strained necks. You're like, dude, this, how, how old are you? Like, look, <laughs> look, look amazing. You know, like I'm, I'm yeah. 41. I'm looking at these guys like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to look like this when I get this age. Yeah. You can do that now in the old days. Mike Tyson, man. Out. Yeah, dude. Listen, man, I had him on the podcast uh-huh. like 10 months ago, and then I had him on the podcast last week. Uh-huh. And that's two to- totally different human beings. Yeah, that's a science project right there. Really? There's a lot going on. But you yeah. can do that now. Oh, yeah, you can do that now. You I'm know? telling dude, he looks fucking terrifying. Well, I mean, so like- Ready to go. How old are you? 53. Okay, so I'm, I'm 41, 53. Do you know anybody that looked at Hewitt um, when you grew up? That no. was 53. No, they were all dead. Right? They didn't, they weren't jacked. Yeah. So like, I remember 40, my, my dad's 40th birthday and all of his 40 year old friends were there and I have to talk disparagingly about my dad's friends, but you know, there were beer bellies, mm-hmm. you know, and guys kind of hanging out, talking war stories of, um, yep. you know, their glory days and college athletics. Um, now you look like my friends that are all forties and you're like pretty fit jacked. Yeah. Jacked muscular, yeah. healthy, yeah. fast, you know, like the kids want to go play ball and they're like, yeah, try to keep up, boy. You well, know? people know the benefit of exercise for overall health when you get older now. They yeah. didn't, they, nobody fucking worked out in the 50s and 60s. Yeah. They yeah. barely worked, they worked out if they're doing a sport. And once they were doing the sport, they didn't do shit. I'm going to be a freak till I die. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. All the way to the grave. You're like, fuck yeah. What is wrong with this guy's energy? Yeah. Why is he training so much? Exactly. There's, I'm still going to have people come to Sheepdog Response. You're like, this 70 year old just outshot me. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. When people talk to me about like, uh, you know, what, what what supplements are you taking? I'm like, all of them. Whatever works. Yeah. What's working? Tell me what works. I'll yeah. get people on. Tell me what's worked. I'll take that. Yeah. What works? What works? No. I'm I'm just trying to stay jacked. <laughs> I want to keep moving. Yeah. yeah. I want high libido. I want yes. high energy. Yes. I want a ton of fun. Yes. And uh, I want people to be like, how do I keep up? Rage. Rage yeah. against the dying of the light. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going softly. No. Fuck Once you. Once more time into the fray, we'll go. Yeah, I yeah. don't. I don't think you people know what it's like to be both. Either people know what it's like to be tired and weak, or they know what it's like to be strong. You know, but when you've been both, when you really, when you really know where it can slide into, yeah. and the only way you know that is if you've been strong. And most people never really get there. But when you get strong and then maybe you get a little bit sick or maybe you get injured and you go, fuck, once this ACL heals up, I'm getting back after yeah. it. I, I feel can't so wait. good. Yes. Yes. The uh, you know the, I wasn't joking about the transformation. Um, I, 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 I Jamie, you need to come to one of these courses. And Jamie's gonna be shooting people. I'm, he's gonna be busy. Can you believe you gun. have a gun? Let's do it. You have. <laughs> you, you got one right there. Well, I don't yeah, know about the shooting in. people. But we're he's, he's ready. Yeah, he's, he's ready. ready. But like, <laughs> you get this this contagious itch yeah you know and like you, you scratch the surface and then you see what's on the other side and you're like oh and then you scratch a little bit more and you see like how fun and like food tastes better sex is more fun you like work is easier yeah like, everything just gets better and then you like you, you then then you're in yeah like now now you're hooked yeah and then but that process is is like you know a, a calloused hand mm-hmm. you know chunky ears yep but man, it's worth it. It's all worth it. So yeah. good. I, I'm fucking preach it. Preach yeah. it. Preach it from the rooftops. Yeah. But hate, get that hate out. Yeah, get the, the hate out. Yeah, that does not help. It doesn't help anything. Nope. It doesn't help you either. Solution it's, oriented. It's the only poison that that kills the vessel that's containing it. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it's it's fucking terrible for you. And it erodes everything physically, yeah. mentally, yeah, and you're everything. Like, um, I posted a picture on Instagram. And it was, it was off of Andy No. He just took all the mug shots of everybody that had been arrested. Mm-hmm. They all look like shit. It's so bad. <laughs> I mean, bad skin, yeah. sunken eyes, yeah. weird hairlines, mm-hmm. like multiple colors, mm-hmm. you know, like uh, bad tattoos. Yep. Every bad thing that you could see visually about a person was, and a lot of people are like, they, it looks like they have some mental health issues. And I don't know how you see mental health issues in, in people, but there is like, a, a, 
you don't let yourself look like that unless there's a problem. Do you see the video of the woman who was saying, I don't give a fuck that a fascist died tonight? Did you ever see that video no. from Portland after the guy got shot and killed? Oh, no. She built like a pear. Big, fat, sloppy lady no. with, with fucking sweatpants on. And I'm like, of course you don't care. You no. don't even care about your own body. You don't care about no. yourself. You don't care about your life. You found a microphone. You got a microphone now, and you're yelling it out because no. you've got a whole bunch of other losers who'd gathered together, and you could say nonsense, and they all cheer. But I want all of those people on this side. Yeah. You know, like, I, I, I feel sorry for her. I pity her. I want to go take her by the hand. I want to walk a couple of blocks with her. I want to pick a couple of meals for her. And then I want to get up the next day and walk four blocks with her and then pick a few more meals with her. And then, like, everything starts getting better. The problem is she'd have to let go and realize that she's wrong. She'd let, let go of her hate. Just, let go of her hate. Let go of what she's done. Like, let go of the path. Let go of what, what you've done with your body, what you've done with your brain. Let go of the path that you've been on and, and recognize you're a human being yeah. and you can change and learn and grow. But you got to recognize that this is ch cheering for someone who got murdered in the street. You should be like, this is nah. not what we're about. This is all wrong. Saying, I don't give a fuck if a fascist died tonight. Like, no, the, that, that, that guy who you think is a fascist is a human being. He might have a child. He might have a wife. He, might, he definitely has a mom and a dad. Like, this is not right. No. This is not how we're supposed to be. We're supposed to be a community. America's supposed to be a community. And if we disagree or we agree, we're supposed to work it out. We're not supposed to be shooting at each other in the streets over no. fucking nonsense. And you're not supposed to be cheering about it with a bunch of other losers. That's no. not what this is supposed to be about. No. And no and no one is doing a goddamn thing about it in Portland. They're just letting it go. No. That fucking mayor is an idiot. Jesus go. Christ is he bad. I loved Portland. It's amazing. Ten years ago. I love visiting there. I was there before the pandemic. Really? I did the Moda Center there. We do. It's um, fucking great there. Uh -oh. I love great Helium's. Food. Oh, fuck yeah. They got great everything. They got food trucks. The people are cool. We run a course there uh, a few times a year. And we always loved, like guys, the instructors are always like, oh, I want to do the Portland one. Because like the, the B&Bs are cool. You got all the water. Everything's gorgeous. All the food's fantastic. And like Oregon, really the, the, the whole Northwest, Washington, Northern California and Oregon, like they're cool people. You know, they're like, they're kind of, kind of hippie, but also kind of like about health and about freedom, but they're also made a little progressive in some of their social ideas, but they want to be left alone. So that's, it's just a cool people. Yeah. And, uh, it's, it's a ton of fun, but now we're like, can we run a course in Portland? Can we? It's a small amount of people, man. It's a small percentage of the millions of people that live up there. Yeah. It's a small, loud, angry, fucked up group of people. Where the majority needs to step up. And they're kind of trying. They're trying. Yeah. You know, there's a lot a lot of people that are very upset about what's going on and trying to figure out some way to get the mayor to act or get the state police to act or get someone to act. It's fucking more than a hundred days yeah. of protest. Now. I love the lawsuits are, that are starting to pop up by business owners. Yeah. Um, what was that, that the district in Seattle where they're like, Oh yeah. Chaz. Oh yeah. The Chaz. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Um, a bunch of people are suing the city and the state for not providing the services that they had by taxes and legislation they're supposed to have so their businesses were burnt all because they're saying that the the local government was complicit in letting these things happen uh, by not protecting by not yeah. having police come and say nope you can't do this there's a law that prohibits you from this because a guy has a cell phone and you don't know who that guy is you don't get to go beat him right, right? like i don't have control of this business so i'm going to go smash the windows and burn it down all those things are happening worth and within that chaz um we're like, well, there's laws against that, right? That's arson and that's assault. And, but you guys weren't enforcing any of these. So the lawsuit is that these people are complicit and it's like, it's going to be, uh, one of them was a father of a murdered kid is suing the, uh, I think the city, the city of Seattle for allowing that to happen. Whoa. Heavy stuff. That's heavy. Yeah. There's rule of law for a reason. Security, stability. There is. It's like. You know, this is a funny thing that Trump does where he tweets law and order all the time. You know, like every few days, law and order, yeah. all caps. But he's right. You need that. That's how you have safety. Yep. That's how you have peace. What's that, uh, the movie where you get like a knight to go crazy and like- The Purge. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, that Tell me that didn't inspire a lot of these fucks. It did. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And- I mean, you, you actually see like tactics that were used in that movie being used in, I mean, sometimes Hollywood is, 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 is more real than fiction. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and uh like that's what happened they took what they were watching like oh we we can go and do this (sighs) no you can't and don't try it in texas no that's that's a terrible idea it's a bad idea especially what you were saying about all the (laughs) special ops guys that are here so many yeah enjoy the cigars (laughs) they they had another do us um yeah everybody loves you it's funny thanks man i love them too yeah Listen, dude, we're all already more than three hours in here. Holy crap. Believe that? How do you have a clock? How, how fast did time fly? I don't know. I was looking at that skull and being like, that that was pretty. Yeah. It was a white-tailed deer I shot in uh, Idaho, or uh, Iowa, rather. My friend John Dudley's property. <laughs> Delicious. If that guy ever comes around, can I just watch him yes. shoot a bow? I'll, I'll have him talk to you. <sighs> I'll have him teach you. Cameron he, Haynes, He'd too. be happy to. Yeah, both those guys. They'll yeah. be here. Cam will be here next week. You want to hang out with them? Um, we're we're shooting. Uh, you're invited. We're shooting uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, well, when Dudley's here and he will be here, um, I will uh, I will set it up. Okay. Have you shot a bow before? Yeah, I, I, I hunt with okay, the bow. Okay, you hunt with the bow. Yeah. That's right. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll have him help you. Give you some pointers and shit. He's he'll fucking the tighten the groups up like that. Yeah, he's awesome. That is so cool. I appreciate you, brother. Thank yeah. you very much for being here. Yeah, I'm glad you're here. I'm, I'm couldn't be happier. Yeah, you just got to start saying yes to some of those invites. Okay, I will. But weather's, I was, weather's dropping. I Helicopters going to be flying. I was just I know you're overwhelmed. I was, we, well, we had to put this fucking place together. I had to move in. Oh. There was a lot going on. We, I mean, I literally decided to move and was moved in in a month. That's insane. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. Bought a house in yeah. less than a month. Yeah. I was like, let's do it. Let's go. Yeah. As soon as my wife and kids were in, I was like, let's fucking go. We're out. Yeah. And it all coincided with the podcast moving to Spotify, which was crazy. They thought it was crazy. Like, what are you doing? And I'm like, let's, let's fucking party. Yeah. Let's have some fun, man. Yeah, let's make it rad. <laughs> I'm going to Texas. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, my pleasure. Appreciate you, brother. God bless. Goodbye, everybody.